Good morning, gamers and gentle gamers. Say good morning, really, it's like 8 o'clock at night. It, it is time once again for the the annual bullshit. Also, hello, first time chat. Uh, does that say Darth Haven? I haven't the slightest idea. This looks like something my mother would do. <laughs> That's the username, if I'm honest. No, she would use a really ridiculous pun, actually. Wait, hello. We do this every year. Every year on my birthday. Hopefully it's not too loud. It looks like it's going to be too loud. Let me turn my volume slightly down. There we go. I, I haven't done this in a bit, so my volume is a bit scrappy. Okay. Oh, it's going to be it's going to be a good night. Hopefully my internet holds out. Be nice and hold out on my birthday, would you? I don't ask for a lot. I just ask for things to work. Things work out. Things worked out today. I had a good day. Uh, I have a lot of things to talk about, and I'm very excited. I want. I hope some of the regs will show up. I say regs, but I haven't streamed in months. I wouldn't be surprised if people forgot who I was. Okay, rolling. Oh. We we don't have time for this. I stream this game a couple of times a year, including on my birthday, or basically any point when I get really tilted. Uh, so, we've seen all of the cutscenes several times. Over. I don't know if that sound is peaking. I hope not. Thank you for I hope it's not peaking over me. Free ten dragons in the artisan world. Then find the balloonist. He'll transport you to the next. Place. How about I find your mom? I'm going after him. Find dragons first. All I can tell you. Right, my sound's peaking a bit. There we go. Let's turn that down slightly more. I'm, I'm kind of... I messed with the audio a bit. Uh, and I, I don't think that it's tell. It seems like it has. Alright, well. Hopefully the recording isn't super quiet. Which reminds me... I'm going to sit in the DGen live channel in my own Discord and see who shows up. I have a channel for this specifically just in case. I don't know if anyone will. Uh, because I do this every year and it's uh, really annoying. And I'm really annoying about it. Because why wouldn't I be? I like Dark Hollow. I want to get that out of the way first. But also... We'll find out. Kook is asleep. Kook isn't gonna see it. Draco's probably busy. Um, hopefully these fuckers don't get me banned. I don't want to get banned on Twitch, especially not after a new, new venture is about to start. Nope. We we commit genocide here. We kill all of the Norks. Hey friend, what's up? I feel the same way. Alright. So this is gonna be a, a hallmark. Gnork with the club, we get it. Well, it, it's not a small stream without 
without the bot spam. Let's see. Uh, hold up. I think I'm the only one. So. Seriously? There we go. I don't know how the hell channels work. This is why bigger streamers have mods. Anyway, uh, that's fun. I really appreciate the people who would come into my channels earlier and, and like just deal with that shit. They were fast about it too. Twitch trying to tell me that's an unrecognized command. That better not be an unrecognized command or you got some issues. Okay. Out we go. So things I did today. I'm gonna get this out of the way first. I got to play board games with people, which is always fun. Uh, I, I basically bullied Kook into playing my favorite board game of all time by pulling the birthday card. She said it was fine, but uh, broken and unbalanced and kind of poorly tested. Or at least poorly thought out. I said it was poorly tested. Yes. Yes, it is. It is... It, it was uh, quite embarrassing. Oh. Bonk. Alright, well... It's fine, you've only played this game for the past... Hang on. Twenty-six years? Yeah, twenty-six years. You've only played this game for twenty-six years. Uh, you don't have to be good at it. Can't be bad to think about that. This game is old. I prob I'm gonna be doing this when this game is thirty. Can't wait to see how they fuck it up for its 30th birthday. Hey, friend. Yeah, I feel the same way. Get out of my way. Hey, want to see something fun? Burp. And now I play the waiting game. Thanks for the lift, buddy. Give me that key. i to go pull a national treasury heist. Spyro, want to know a secret? Nope. And now I need an adult. Meowing. Give me that gem. Nice. Alright, so the last gems that I need are up there. Merp. 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 So Dark Hollow is the easiest level to complete if you're trying to get into Toasty. Because it's so easy to just go straight to the end. So you can exit the level there. I don't recommend it. Unless you want to go all the way through Town Square and deal with Stone Hill's bullshit. Stone Hill is my least favorite level in the game, and thank god we get that out of the way fast. By the way, ASMR snacking sounds, so trigger warning for that. Uh, I have sushi. It tastes kind of weird. But I'm also kind of into it. 
It's got like some kind of weird spicy mayo on it. I'm a very happy shroom when I have sushi. Oh, that had tuna on it. Mm. That had tuna, an avocado. I'm not sure I would get this particular thing of sushi again, but I'm enjoying it while I have it. I would have preferred to get one that had more that was a bit more like the last one I had, but I think they were out of those. And I think they rotate which sushi they sell, so I gotta remember that in the future. There's a way to get on this thing. And like, you can rocket yourself up there if you know how. I don't because I'm not a speedrunner. I wonder if at some point... Uh, so I get a couple of speedrunners in here sometimes. Uh, assuming they don't all hate me now because I've been so edgy on Twitter that I'm pretty sure multiple people have blocked me by this point. Which, yeah, no, nah, that's fair. But sometimes I would get speedrunners in here, and they would say... Uh, they show they saw me play through uh, Crystal Flight. Let's go free Delvin while I'm thinking about it. Something, something, Sparks. Anyway, uh, they showed... They told me that the way I did it was the speedrun route. The old one, not the new one. But I thought it was really funny that they're like, that's the old speedrun route. And I'm like, that's the route that I figured out myself because it's the only one that works for me. Uh, <laughs> old video game players, man. Oh, hang on. Oh, I don't like this at all. I'm using a an 8-bit sorry, 8-bit do controller because I don't really want to uh, plug in the PS4 controller. I do not like how the D-pad feels. Just instantly, I'm I'm kind of sitting here like, "Damn. I miss my dual shock like already." But I don't want to put up with this bullshit, so we're doing this for now. All right, it's it's fine. It's fine. This is fine. I'm getting used to it. It's, it's not that big a deal. It just hurts my fingers a bit. It's gonna be real fun. We get to wild flight, and I and that's hurting my fingies because of how precise the movement is. But you know what? That's a problem for future shroom. Come here, bitch. I demand your ass. Okay, let's see. Uh, grab you. Oh. Well, uh, we don't need to talk about what just happened there. Yep, nothing. Nothing to see here. Nothing sussy at all. Okay. No trains? Alright. Well. I'm kind of just going to hope that I didn't completely screw the pooch on this. Uh, it's, it's fine. You've only played this game for over two decades. You don't have to be good at it. Let's see if we can not solve. Yeah, we're dead. I was right there. That's so tilting. All right. Well, that's my fault for being shit. And th All right. This controller is going to keep tilting me. I'm going to go get my other one. And, like, fight the dual sense. Because, damn, does the D-pad feel bad. I mean, it is based on an Xbox controller. It's D-pad, but it's going to be fucked no matter what I did. I don't really want to put up with the, the DS4's bullshit tonight. All right, now this time don't get cocky, asshole. You could have done that if you didn't. Get 
You can see the way that I'm jerking. It's because this controller feels so bizarre to play on. It's fine. It's not all the controller's fault. I'm sure that I also just suck now. Alright. That's better. You, come here. I demand your blood. I might be getting a little used to it. But it does seriously hurt my thumbs. It's just kind of hard to do some of the muscle memory things that I, I'm used to. I think it's not that big a deal, but definitely going forward when I want to emulate PlayStation games, I'm getting the DualShock 4. Either that or I'll go salvage the DualSense from my mother's room because it currently lives in there since we use that to play. Give me that. It, it's used on the Steam Deck. Uh, for when she wants to play games. We got a Steam Deck. So that we can... We got a Steam Deck and they came up with a new model like two months later. I'm so fucking tilted. That's bullshit. Give me a refund. Fuck you, Gabe Newell. Get owned. Ah, get wrecked, nerd. I kind of miss when a friend of mine would show up in, in here. Uh, he left for his own reasons, so I don't think we're going to be talking much for a while. But, I do miss when he would come in here and roast me. Best times. Well, anyway, people got their own shit going on. Time to do Stonehill and fucking suffer. In we go! I have no idea what's in this sushi. I think it's avocado. Ooh, avocado. Oh, tempura? Damn, that's good sushi. The light crisp of a cucumber. And I believe it had... S I'm not sure if that's... It might be... I think it's like imitation crab meat, but I'm not sure. I love me some sushi rolls, I'll be honest. When you free a dragon or step on one of their platforms, you're... Doing your mom. How'd you like that answer? Anyway. I've got sushi, I've got Snapple. I've got Snapple peach tea. I've discovered... Uh, we used to get it a lot. We used to get Snapple a lot when I was a kid. And I have rediscovered my love of it. Alright. Well... Quiet night tonight. That's okay. I kind of understand. Not all of our streams can be bangers. It probably doesn't help that last year when I did a birthday stream, I was kind of messed up. I was so messed up. And by messed up, I mean I like cried for half of it, so I just kind of hit it. I normally upload these on YouTube. Uh, I didn't do- I, I decided that one doesn't need to stay up. I don't really like to erase my hit my public history, but in this case, it's less erasure because I acknowledge that it happened, and more I don't really want people to stumble on it and just get sad. I don't do these to make people upset. A lot of things happened last year that really helped me deal with the shit that I was coping with la the, during that one, though. Like a lot's happened this year. A lot of things have changed. Especially me. I think for the better. Nope. 
Alright, time to go fuck around on the top of this level for about two hours while I figure out where this bastard is. Damn, that's good sushi. And I got canola chips that I can dip, and I've got cookies, and I've got shrimp, and I've got tea, and I've got... I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just happy. I'm just a happy. Ha you can make me pretty happy by giving me uh sushi and and Chinese food and 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 uh and and cookies and cannoli and cake. They didn't have any good cake. My mom didn't bake one because we were going to get so much food that she's like, "Nah." I asked her for deviled eggs. She's like, Bitch, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> it's like, this is <laughs> I, 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 and she's like, get out of here. That was great. Uh, I like food. Is is kind of the point of that entire tangent. Like all kinds of food. I'll be eating food, and I'll still be thinking about other food. Damn, I could go for a steak, actually. That sounds really good to have with sushi. I know that they make Wagyu sushi, and I've never had it. Because you don't really get real Wagyu in America. I wish I lived near a place that had good, like, Japanese restaurants. Get owned, nerd! All right, time to go, like, run around this place for the next five hours. Because Stonehill has to be the worst fucking level. Just everything's all strewn out in the middle of nowhere. I don't even like the music here. The music here kind of sucks. It was better in one of the demos, because the demo just has, like, Oh good, I'm missing a single red gem. I'm so happy about that. Oh, there it is. Thank god. Holy shit, that was fast. Fastest stone hill of my life! As they're botching Sunny Flight, that feels pretty good. Ah! That's wasabi! Uh, don't touch the wasabi. Not again. <laughs> Not after today. You know, I always do the boss in the world last. I wonder if I should break tradition a bit. I feel like no, because I, I don't really like breaking the tradition. It's just too important to me to do this in something approaching the correct order. Boom. This guy used to be named Silvis. Hey, Spyro. Press the jump button twice to glide. And, and don't be afraid. Afraid? Of what? Falling from high mountain peaks? Plummeting into prehistoric glaciers? Crashing through- yeah, we get the point, buddy. I- That was wasabi, wasn't it? That thing that I just ate was wasabi, wasn't it? Oh, titties and bowls. That begs the question. This guy has a bunch of wasabi on it, doesn't it? I'm probably not going to eat that roll. That roll scares me. Could you imagine biting into that on stream? That would be embarrassing. That's a pretty standard California roll. It has a little bit of salmon on top of it, though. The sashimi is the best part for me. And the avocado. Oh. Damn, that's good. You have no idea how much I love sushi. I probably stated it enough times that someone has some idea. Ah! This controller is pretty loose. Anyway. 
Mayhaps I should talk about some of those grand plans I have. Just in case anyone's lurking who generally cares. I'm feeling somewhat lonely, though. I haven't spied any of the regs. But it is also a Sunday night. I'm sure that people got work and shit. We all get older. And the world just gets... Wait, did I already go this way? I went both ways. I wasn't thinking. And the world gets more complex every year, was what I was going to say. Anyway, let's deal with this. I don't hate Town Square. I kind of used to. I used to think it was a really shit stage. Uh, uno momento. I, I, I'd like to consume more of my delicious vice. Peak. Big bite of avocado and cucumber. The absolute pinnacle of flavor. And a bit of shrimp on top. Mike tugged a bit. Still using that crappy mod, Mike. My old one actually broke. Uh, I had to get a new one. It broke, and I got exactly the same model. Damn thing broke down after like three years, come on. Considering what I paid for it, bastard. Anyway. Man, I love with Skylos. Sorry, just had a vibe. I apologize if me talking about the flavors of sushi make people hungry. I mean, I don't really apologize for that, uh, but I understand that it does kind of suck a little. I think it's really interesting that you can, like, charge those bowls, and you'll still get the gem, but they'll just kind of be stuck there. The implication being that they could probably get loose at some point. You don't have to kill them. But this seems pretty permanent. So, I, I usually do, because something about it just seems really inhumane. Like, trapping an animal seems more inhumane to me than killing it outright. I also could swear that they could hurt you if you get right behind them and they buck on you, but I've never been able to get them to do it. Hey, Spyro, did you see a man dressed in blue running around here? He's a thief! And he's stolen a dragon egg! You've got to track him down and, and get that egg! Run! Run! <laughs> I'm getting a little winded! I let that guy play out in his entirety because my mother loves him. Hmm. This is the part where I admit that I'm not a fan of fish row, but... It's not bad. Hmm. Not bad at all. Oh, that had wasabi on it. Only a tiny amount. Well, we're gonna pretend that it didn't. Uh, get owned, nerd. Alright. Oh god, I can taste it in the back of my mouth. I'm not gonna think about it.
It was a good piece of sashimi, though. Well, a little dry. Just sit for a tiny amount. Yep. Oh. These things are great because they can actually just kind of kill dudes if you can hit him right. Thank you for releasing me. Boy, I'm glad that guy's in the game. Anyway. Wait, why am I saving? It's weird. Oh, this looks like a good ass piece. It's got shrimp on it. Looks like the only place left to do is toasty. Oh, that shrimp was a little dry, though. Eh, that's okay. Did I already murder you? Yeah, I did. Eh. May as well. That pushed me over to get an extra life, so that's neat. Fun fact, Thomas's name used to be Silvis. I'm not sure why they changed it. Seems like purely a stylistic choice. Maybe they were trying to avoid a copyright? I don't know. Sometimes it's just stylistic. I guess it doesn't have to have a deeper meaning or anything. This guy's neat. He does have two lines in the game for whether or not you're ready to open the dragon thing. Cool, Brad. Do that again. The artisan's boss has threw a portal behind me. You can challenge him now, if you feel you are ready. Yeah, if you if you don't comp if you don't get to the exit of any of the stages, like the exit portal that says return home, and you don't go through it, his line is, "But you are not yet ready, Spyro," and then he tells you how to do it. I realize that seems like a nothing thing today because of all of the different options that exist in video games, but for a game to react to your play narratively in that way was actually pretty unique at the time. Because outside of RPGs, games did not do that. And even in some RPGs, the way they'd interact with you was still pretty scripted and linear. I think especially today people take stuff like that for granted and i used to think that my analysis of this was a bit hyperbolic like well nah i mean i'm saying it like that but i'm sure people don't really no the kids today have no idea how to appreciate something old that does stuff like this because they didn't grow up with it and we're several generations of that just being a mundane thing now and that's so wild to think about, because I remember thinking that was so cool. Like, oh, the game knows what I've already done? I mean, of course it does. It's just having the game narratively react to it in a way that didn't feel static. By the way, if you're not good at this game, touch this guy before you go over there, because you will get ass fucked. Uh, if you don't know what's over there. I don't know why I'm saying that, like anyone who hasn't already played this game would know. I mean, I guess... I don't know, like, I haven't played Reignited since launch, so I don't know if it's any better or worse. This... I can't remember. I'm gonna assume that it sucks because it's Reignited and the sun's in the wrong place in literally every level, especially in Haunted Towers. Uh, and it's really unfaithful, and I'm still mad about what they did to Metalhead, and I don't like the majority of the enemy designs, and I just think it kind of sucks. And also the environmental arts just generally kind of a miss. 
I don't feel like bitching about Reignited. I do that enough. My opinion of it is that it's it's lame. If you want to play the games, play the original. Do not talk to me otherwise. If you talk to me about the remake, I'm just going to tell you to play the original. It's, it's not difficult to get access to because it's easy to obtain. Uh, and even Android phones have an emulator now. It requires a small amount of knowledge on how to do it. And I just think anyone who doesn't at this point is making excuses. Like, maybe a few years ago, it's like, oh, emulating PlayStation games is a little out of reach. It's literally one of the most accessible emulators. Nobody has any excuse to not play the original game over Pro Reignited. If you're not doing it, you either have some weird-ass bias to its generic, shitty-ass-looking Disney vibes that it's giving off, at which point we are not gonna agree and have nothing to discuss. Uh, or you're just kind of lazy. There we go. Onward to Peacekeepers. My least favorite level in the game. I will say that I like some of the designs in Reignited for the dragons. I don't like them for the enemies. I generally think they're really generic for the enemies. I'm keeping that sushi to the side because I'm scared of it. I'm pretty sure it has wasabi on it. If I'm going to bite into a big thing of wasabi, it's going to be uh, pretty... Welcome to Peacekeeper, Spyro. Look how our treasure has been turned against us and stolen. Recover our treasure, Spyro. I love that guy's... the way he animates, he stretches. I should have pointed it out before opening the cuts, but it's really cool how he, he like, stretches to express surprise. Like, they, they use the hardware to get more out of the characters. I love the stuff that they did in these old games to get a lot out of hardware that otherwise couldn't do things like this. Like, honestly, this game's brilliant in so many different ways. And I like a lot of things about it. I also love the the little flicker of light here, the way that it takes advantage of the kind of vertex shading the PlayStation can do. Games didn't do that at the time. Like, lighting was static or painted on. They didn't have any amount of variance. It was actually one of the trickiest things to emulate about the PlayStation when the PlayStation was still being figured out. Uh, so the first Spyro would look really dull and strange. There's a D-Make mod for Reignited that attempted to make the old graphics, but it looks really shit by comparison because it can't do the vertex shading. The person who made it basically refuses to admit this and just kind of huffs that copium on how it looks better than the original actually. I mean, they could also really think that, but I think they'd be fucking dumb if they, if they did. There's like no way for them to come out of that without sounding like they're coping. But, like, it's hard to do because it's not a thing that Unity can do natively. There's a guy who made a fan game that became an original game when he got C and D'd. Uh, and that's really sad. I think if he made his fan game at a time when Reignited didn't exist or after it existed, he'd probably be able to work on it still. It sucks when you start working on something and then a company just decides to, like, revive it, and you're kind of like... You kind of, like, have to go dark on it for a bit and just kind of wait. I don't know if that works, by the way. I don't know if you can just, like, put down a project, not do anything with it, and then, like, pick it up again. Unless you do it completely in secret. Okay, which bullshit do I want to get out of the way first? Let's do Clifftown first, because it's it's Stonehill, but slightly less shit. Uh, I do like this game. It probably sounds like I don't. I actually really like the later levels. I just like the later levels more. 
And I guess that's because I have so much familiarity with the older levels that they feel extremely bland to play. Um, because they're so easy, and there's no... I don't think there's anything interesting about them. I mean, I guess they wouldn't be easy if you're a kid and you're playing for the first time, but they also look really boring, in my opinion. Uh, the later levels have a kind of interesting aesthetic about them. Or at least I think Magicraft is in Dreamweaver too. Beastmakers is debatable. I will give Reignited credit for one thing. Some of the Beastmaker stages actually do look better. I'm annoyed that Misty Bog is no longer massively foggy because I thought that was kind of a point of that level. I like that the home world looks more like a vibrant swamp at night instead of like a barren wasteland, but I think also that misses the point a bit. I don't like Metalhead Sky looking more evil. I feel like they tried to make a boss level, but in the process they they messed up the the. Sorry, my nose is a little stuck. <laughs> Get owned, nerd. Uh, oh, where was I? Ah, sorry. Right, but like, the thing about Metalhead that I really like is that the boss levels always look kind of solemn and intimidating when you go into them. Metalhead's is uniquely intimidating. You go into it, and it's like the, the moon is like directly shining down on you. And it has a cold kinda kind of like color scheme where it's it's definitely late at night and the world feels very peaceful and like when you're sitting on the dock I don't want to say peaceful but everything feels very still there's like a tension to the way that feels in the original and then reignited they just kind of ruined it with that bright red sky I think it ruins the vibes like not all the sky but they gave it like a sunset and I'm like I don't know, nah, this this ruins the time of day, this ruins the way it feels. And they also just made it like an old boarded up city. I don't know how I feel about that. I think I see what they're going for, and I think I would have appreciated it more if they kept some of the more vibes of like stillness that the old one had. Because it's about the colors you use too, it's not just about the... Uh, I gotta remember to flame these pots. Gotta remember to light up the pot. <laughs> Not that kind of stream. Um, Merp. I love this fucking smart ass. Spyro's like, what's over there? He's like, why don't you glide there and find out, bitch? I paraphrased that a bit. Okay, I've already done that one. I think there is something that I can glide to up here, though. Take me all the way to the top. Okay. I think there's something I can glide to up here. Yep. You can actually get this thing from down there, but, I mean, I'm already here, so I may as well. Um, how let me think. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I feel like older games succeed at the colors, at, at mastering, like, the feel through sheer colors a lot better. Because they don't really have many other options. They have to capture their mood through a more minimalistic aesthetic. I think it works considerably better. And I think when you have a remake that just has all of these modern tools... A lot of people, like, the artistry just goes completely out the fucking window. Because you don't need it anymore. And you don't, like, a lot of these modern people who learned on modern tech, they don't really, and they don't appreciate old, a lot of them don't even appreciate it. They think it's old and, like, backwards and you don't have to care anymore. And you can do whatever you want. And so they do something completely different. And their attitude is not only disrespectful, but it is also, like, incredibly myopic 
just the lack of ability to appreciate the way that older games accomplished uh, extremely interesting vibes to the areas they created. And I'm very fascinated with the minimalistic kind of... Even if I don't really do things that are faithful to old games, like the, to the hardware, I don't necessarily always use the colors it could produce. But I, I like stuff that kind of takes the philosophy of doing a lot with very little. Which is kind of why, like, fake bit and, uh, like, low spec art really catches my eye. I'm really into that, like, whole. Because you have to have a, a, a kind of mind for it. I don't know. Uh, I guess the point that I was originally trying to make is fuck Activision for, like, seeing being a guy who clearly cares about a series a lot, figured out how to get vertex shading to work in Unity. And I think that guy deserves more respect than he got. They should have fucking hired him. He would have loved to work on that remake. He should have hired him. He deserved to do it a hell of a lot more than anyone else that was working on it. Uh, I really should play the latest build of his fan game. I think I played a very old one and I really enjoyed it. But he's made several improvements to the way it moves now, and I'm very curious to see where it's gone. I wish he'd stop shilling for Unity. <laughs> That's kind of my one complaint with him. Uh, I left his Discord because of it. I'm like, what is there, like, beef with Goto? Like, seriously, you bring it up every time. I guess it's because whenever Unity fucks up, people are like, use Goto? Which, I mean, that's based. But I guess I can see where it gets annoying. If you don't really want to learn how to do another engine. I don't think most people would care too much about, like... Because I think a lot of people understand that, like, switching tools is hard. If Paint Tool Sai ever fucks up considerably, I am definitely just not going to bother with art going forward. Now, I mean, I say that. I'll move to Krita or something, but, like... I get it. God, if they fuck up, then it's time to make art exclusively on my phone. <laughs> uh, where am I missing so many gems? Are they just up here in glide spots? Hi. Guess I wasn't paying attention to where I was going. I really feel like I'm missing some in a stupid place. I really feel like I'm missing some in a, in a really obvious place. Oh! I didn't... No, I just did that. I, I did the turnaround, right? The one where you go back there? I did that. I'm pretty sure I did that. I'm kind of rambling. We did Stonehill so fast, and Clifftown is the one that sticks me, huh? It's gonna be this, isn't it? Ow. I'm like perfectly aware that I'm probably streaming to an audience of none. This is my birthday stream. I do it every year. I do it for me more than anything else. But I do have that image of the guy from Sunny Boy in my head who is actually streaming to an audience of none behind black curtains, completely isolated from the world. Uh, and he's talking about a neat little game that he found and wants, and wants to show off. And like, that, that's my fucking spirit animal right there. <laughs> I love the takeaway of that episode of Sunny Boy. The takeaway is community support, by the way. It's some people feel invisible. That invisibility makes them kind of like retreat from everyone else. And the way that you deal with that is to offer them a place where they can... Like, you actually have to do things for them. You, you have to make an effort to include them, too. They are not solely responsible for that. You have to make that effort, too. You meet people halfway. 
Sunny Boy is such a good anime. It's such a good anime about things that I think are globally applicable, even if it's a uniquely Japanese pen. Ow. Hey, I was eating sushi, little bitch. You ended my no damage run. Actually, I'm pretty sure that ended a while ago. Anyway, let's do this bullshit level. There's nothing bullshit about it, it's just really not fun. I don't like Ice Cavern. Like I said, this is my least favorite home world. I like the soundtrack though, it's pretty good. Damn, that's good sushi. I have one left. It scares me. Bong. 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 I'm going a certain amount into this stage. Get away from me. I know how to kill things. I love just how, like, overcompensating all of the dragons and beast and uh, peacekeepers are. They all have lines like, when you're strong, <laughs> like me. <laughs> Seriously. Alright, listen to this guy. I'm not joking. A word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big. <laughs> like me. Before charging those large enemies. Seriously. This is some micro penis shit right here. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, uh, I came back here not because I'm like circling while I ramble, uh, but because of this up here. We're gonna go through this stage the wrong way. Not that I needed this, but it is fun to get. One of the things, I don't like live systems, by the way. I think lives are a dead concept. And I don't appreciate remakes keeping them in. I think Sonic Oranges did the right thing when it took them out. Now, people may find this a spicy take, but what purpose do they serve except just to frustrate you and make you play for long? I think a derogatory term that gets thrown around a lot. Thank you for releasing me. You're welcome. I think a derogatory term that gets thrown around a lot is theme parks in games like theme park gaming, where you kind of go through it and expect to see lots of different attractions as opposed to really focusing on the mechanics of something. Basically, it's the idea that a lot of people who don't really want to be held up with things like losing all their lives and game over and having to be set back a bunch of progress are people who kind of just want to do some tourism, where they go through something, have the experience, and then they're done. And I think those people get shade thrown at them, but I think that's kind of unfair. Because for one thing, sometimes I am that person. Maybe not all the time. I mean, sometimes I do play games just for the sole purpose of getting better at something. But then other times, when I'm playing a game, I really want to see all the levels and all of the gimmicks, and I want to like see the characters and the story, and I, w I want to experience a game's eye and ear candy 
before, well before, I want to be really good at it. And I think the benefit of making games easier over time is that more people get to do that. They get to essentially experience video games like you do movies, which is where you you have like a point where you start and, and you slowly progress through the story or the world uh, until you reach until you reach the end. And they don't think about games as the kind of pastime where it's more of a sport. And I think that's valid, and I think a lot of, like, it's not necessarily an older gamer thing. Older gamers aren't always that elitist, and I think this is just a thing that exists regardless of where you are in the gaming space. And it's, it's really unfortunate, if I'm honest, because I think a lot of people... And I'm not- I, I, I mean this the other way, too. I think there is value in doing something uh, in, in a game that wants you to be good at. That, that wants to offer the kind of, like, mechanical perfection. Celeste comes to mind. It's like my best example of a game that, that you progress in by being good at it. It might give you options. Destiny something something we don't care. I didn't- the fuck is Destiny? I didn't even fucking play that game. Eat my ass. Uh, by the way, if you don't know why I say random shit when the dragons come out, it's because I remember what every single one of them says. I can make shitty jokes about every single one of them. But no, uh, I like Celeste for that because even if you can make the game easier with accessibility mode, the main way to play it was the way that I played it because I found that really fulfilling in the moment-to-moment -moment experience of just feeling myself get better at something. And there's real value in that. But also, <laughs> I don't want to be stuck on something for 10 million years. Sometimes I just want to see what else... I want to see what's up ahead. A I want a game to be an adventure, even if it's just tourism. I think that's fine. I don't think an adventure necessarily needs challenge or risk in, a, in a, a medium that is inherently escapist. You're welcome. Anyway, that's my rant to absolutely no one. I don't even remember how I got on this tangent, I'm gonna be honest. A long time ago, I wanted to talk about my future plans for my platform. It'll probably end up being a thing I do at the end of stream, when I sit on the end screen and play my kalimba. By the way, uh, saving grace, I broke a nail a couple of months ago, and it just now broke, and it just now came back. I can play the damn thing again, uh, and I am endlessly happy because it's become a cope on how to deal with a lot of shit. Something, something about armor being slippery. Thank you. By the way, this guy has kind of a cool design in Reignited. I'll give him that. Uh, they gave him, like, a sort of like a fur dragon design. And he has... Can I get to that from here? Can I get to that from here? Hold up. Hold up. One. Two. Uh, just barely make it. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's not too bad. Um. You know, I don't think I've ever done that before. It seems like it's a lot easier to do it from there than it is to go all the way around. Although, I gotta be honest, this, this is pretty annoying. Going through this game, going through this level is strange. This level is routed so strange. I, I actually kind of do appreciate that about it. Uh, this whole thing being kind of kind of routed like this, I guess. It's got kind of a turn to it. Like you can you can go through it either way. Like I'm going through it backwards, and it still feels correct. I think that's really impressive. I I don't think people designed levels at the time like that. Oh, okay, that's all the gems. Goodbye. Pretty sure I'm not missing anything. All right. Yeah. 
Now let's go to a level of which the name sounds like a euphemism for your mother. Dry Canyon. <laughs> your mom's Dry Canyon. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to hurt myself by biting into this and finding out if it's wasabi. Alright. This is either going to hurt You know what? Fold up. That's not what Sami. That's a cashew. What the hell? Why'd you put a cashew on here? I'm not gonna question it. We don't question it. Why is it green? Maybe it's a pistachio, actually. Some kind of nut. These nuts. Got them. What a bizarre flavor. Oh, and tuna. There's tuna under that. Alright. I've never had that before. Sorry, my curiosity got the best of me. Not bad. Don't think I'll get that again. Pretty good, actually. Hey, friend. Goodbye. Anyway, Dry Canyon is actually one of the better levels. Uh, I, I do like this level. I think this is one of the most interesting levels. And I think the developers knew that it was one of the more um, spatially demanding stages because they also made it a bit harder to find. You're welcome. No relation to Conan the Barbarian. Gort? Mine. You know, nerd. Look, look at these cacti, by the way. In Spyro 2, you can break the cacti, and I used to think that meant that Spyro got a power-up. Look at this little barrel cactus, by the way. You see how you flame this guy and he shakes off? It's cute, right? Look at the barrel cactus. Look at how cute that is! <laughs> it wiggles! I love them! That's so cute! Alright, I'll stop. I forgot if Reignited did that. Probably not, because Reignited has the charm of a fucking... Uh, college students pro- Nah, nah, that's insulting to college student projects. Why do these guys just use a bird for a weapon? Who thinks of this stuff? Yeah, I'm not gonna install college projects like that. I've played, like, random fucking senior thesis stuff that people used to post on NDDV. Or even, like, weird little things people make on Itch.io that are better than Reignited. And have a lot more soul. All right, let me think about this. Do I go this way? Hang on. Or do I go this way? I want to say this way first. The split off is entirely how much effort you're giving yourself. Oh damn, that guy had a 25 pointer. 
big money. Come here. Get wrecked, nerds. All right. So if you go the other way, then you have to go all the way around, and then you've got to jump down from there, and you have to go this way anyway. So this is just a time save. Dry Canyon rewards good. We're not gonna let him finish that sentence. You can sit there and and imagine whatever he said about your mom's Dry Canyon. I annoy the hell out of a friend of mine because I think I'm the funniest person in the world when I say something extremely inappropriate. I am, by the way. So he can just suck it. Incredible glide, Spyro. Your mom. Your mom thought so. Alright. Now. If you go back from here because it's real easy to get back down here and go back up there you've just saved yourself a hell of a lot of headache I say this as if anyone else has this problem but me personally I make this mistake every single time I replay this game and I have finally managed to make my brain uh, do the right things. Get fucked. Ah! Get bent, nerds. Alright. Bruh. Get the gem, thank you. This fucking run ending shit. Can I help you? Have a nice fall- have a nice trip. See you next fall. Chicken tendies. Damn, I could use some barbecue tendies. Ask my mom if I can have some good boy tendies. Next time we go to the grocery store, I'm gonna look for some. Okay. And away we go. Uh, we're making pretty good time. I think. I mean, we're not making good time for a speedrunner. Uh, we're actually making pretty shit time for a speedrunner. somewhat used to the d-pad. I play this game largely with the d-pad, by the way. Eh? Did I miss a gem? Somewhere? Eh? Huh. Interesting. Eh, it doesn't really matter. This is the start of the level down here, by the way. This is the start of the level. This whole level loops around. Isn't it such a cool layout? Like, it's very vertical. Like, this is the start- like, this is the end and the start, and the start is where you just kind of loop around it. And you actually do go through a canyon. Like, it's- it's really a canyon. Like, it- They thought about the layout of it. It's- it's very cool. So, like, if you go down here, for example, this is just the- where you start. And it's like, the architecture is like carved into the canyon. By the way, canonically, this water is tar. That's why it looks that way. Uh, Peacekeeper's dragons like to bathe in it. They think it's relaxing. 
I'm guessing Spyro is not of the Peacekeeper species. Guess he doesn't seem to like it at all. Yeah, I think I missed a gem. Like, it's... it's I, where did I miss a gem? What a bizarre turn of events. I'm sure that it's somewhere stupid, and I'm probably just going to have an aneurysm when I find out where it is. Definitely wasn't up here. Nah. Wasn't here. Alright. It's crazy to think about, but I think when I was a kid, this level seemed so much bigger. I guess because I was just figuring out the routing for it, you know? But, like, when you really think about it, it's not a very big stage, is it? Like, the beginning of the level is, like, right there. Right over there. And then this whole thing is just a circular route all the way around to here. Right? Like... Hold on, what's that? Uh, that's just a little... I think that's either a fodder, a little goat dude, hopping around over there, or it's just a weird artifact. It could be either one. This whole area out here feels like an offshoot. Like this little secret space. By the way, I kind of love these glowing gems. Oh, I forgot to free this guy. Alright, I'm dumb. Everyone ignore me. Old man. Old man wants to tell me stories about when I was a pup of smoke. I don't want to hear him. Anyway. One more delicious succulent bite. Make it count. Oh. That is good. That is good. I don't think I'm gonna give that for a while. <sighs> All right. I'm very content. It was a simple tuna sashimi, like, like, just just like a thing of rice with tuna on it. That's all. Nothing special, but it was good. The key to good sushi is good fresh ingredients. We need good fresh ingredients. And then you just put them together with like a, a kind of care that uh, makes a simple thing very good. Appealing to look at and really tasty. Yeah, yeah. This guy has a cool design though. I like his design in this game more than Reignited. Reignited took away their weird leopard spots. I appreciate that some of them are furred, though, kind of giving off the impression of, like, more mammalian features that I think are hinted at in their original designs. Credit for that. I do like how some of them are on four legs, though. And for some reason, Reignited just makes all of them on two legs, and it's like Spyro is a four-legged dragon. Show more dragons on four legs. What the hell? Anyway, that's a nitpick. I mean, probably everything I don't like about Reignited is a nitpick, except that the controls suck. It's probably the only criticism of it that I could legitimize to a lot of people. Well, that and I think they genuinely did ruin some levels. Why does Autumn Plains have the sun where it is? Seriously. I get that, like, little things about Misty Bog being less of a fog, but, like, you made a whole world have different vibes. Why? But whatever, whatever. I'm not gonna expend energy on this anymore. Any
Can we go? Wow, that's off key. Man, I love Copeland's old music. He came back to like uh, redo the stuff and reignite it, but all of the instruments sound kind of tinny now. I wonder why. As far as I know, he actually used the same samples, so whoever mastered it fucked up. I wonder if it was him or someone else. Who do I blame for that? Ba -ba 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 -ba. There we go. All right. I'm to do Dr. Shrimp, as my cousin used to call him. Fun fact, Dr. Shrimp gets his name from an old inside joke among the Insomniac devs where getting shemped, or getting the shemp, was some kind of punitive measure. We're not terribly sure what it meant uh, in the community, but there are some old programmer notes hidden in the files that were data mined, which suggest that it may have been getting sent to HR or getting, like, yelled at by your boss or something, so... They put that in the game as a self-referential. I find that kind of interesting, to be honest. I would love to know the full story. I'd love to know what it means. I'm pretty sure it just means, like, getting yelled at by the boss for being... for, for fucking up or something. I dodged that by accident. That one was on purpose, because I just realized I could do that. I, I tapped this extremely loose button. Uh, fun story, by the way. I did not get this controller to play PC games originally. Uh, the original reason I got it was so that I could play Sonic Frontiers with something approaching a familiar layout, because the Xbox, 3, uh, the Xbox One layout is atrocious. And I have the Xbox One version of Sonic Frontiers. Because I wasn't gonna fucking pay for that shit on Steam with Denuvo in it. You remove Denuvo and I will absolutely pay for it. Well, maybe not now. And it's kind of fucked up pale, so I'm a little bit leery about paying for it now. But had they, at launch, not had Denuvo in it, I would have just bought it on PC. Uh, but honestly, my opinion of it's kind of sour. Well, that was fine. The story's good. Uh, the story's the best thing about it. Actual game is... Uh, if I didn't get that key. Yeah, yeah, watch his back. I have every dragon between both of the home worlds, of which there are 16 in the first and 16 in the second. Get owned, nerd. I get wrecked. The next thing is a little bit sad. I kind of feel bad for him when he says this. That makes me sad. That sounds like he's in such pain. 
I mean, I get he's the bad guy, and he's kind of a dickhead on top of it, but, you know... There we go. That is... Everything in this level. And we can move on to the third. Uh, you'll forgive me, but I may have to go take a slight intermission. Making pretty good time. Which is good because I don't really want to be up too late playing this game. All of these levels would go mu by much faster now. Alright. Uh, slight intermission because I need to go do something very quickly. I'll be right back. And we're back! Oh, I should bring up my... There we go. And we're back. More bullshit. Get wrecked, nerd. Alright. This is actually one of my favorite worlds, so this is gonna be fun. Welcome to Magic Crafters. I want you to release the dragons, reclaim our treasure, and recover the eggs from those pesky blue thieves. Nobody believes me when I say that I remember every dragon. I remember every single dragon and every inflection that exists. Nobody gets to yell at me for skipping the cutscenes. Hey fucker, what's up? Guess what? That's what I thought. Tactical nuke incoming. Wrecked. Too bad you can only do that trick once. to crack my mom up when you would kill them and they would just go ow. My mom thought this game was so painfully silly. Because stuff just didn't exist like it. When you see arrows like these, I can do your mom. I got it. Yep. That is the exact advice. Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Boomer story. Alright, let's get this bullshit out of the way first, because this is my least favorite level in the entire fucking game. 
Oh, and it's going to be so hard to do this with this controller. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, let's get into the gamer position. Let's go. Got him. Got him. All right, gamer. Okay, so far so gamer. Okay, let's try again. Well, I mean, let's, uh, I get it. I'm just first try. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Mind just racing a bit. Pick up some speed after we fall a bit. We're gonna go up. Grab these planes. Grab this plane and this plane and... Oh! My god! Okay. I almost overextended and missed him. And that would have been annoying because I would have to chase his ass down. Okay. So I have been told by uh, experts on making the... on playing the game very fast that the way that I do this level is the old speedrun route. I'm not really sure how to feel about that, but I do find that to be very funny. Because the way that I play the level is actually the way I would thought it was supposed to be played, because I kept failing at the main way that you're supposed to play it. So to me, the only right way to do the level is apparently a speedrun route, and the actual right way to do the level is one that my potato-ass brain cannot comprehend for some dumbass reason. So, there you go. There is the deep lore behind why Shroom plays like a speedrunner, because Shroom is a fucking idiot otherwise. That was slightly less painful than usual. Do those fairies wear anything under their dress, or is it just, like, going commando? These are the, the questions that I think are worth asking about the, the culture and the customs of the Spyro universe. Whether or not the fairies wear panties. And if they do, can I steal them? There are some uh, stream regs that show up uh, that I, I love everyone who shows up, but there's a few people who show up and I'm always really grateful when they're in chat because they're about as degenerate as I am. They appreciate my horny thoughts. There's like a really kinky comic book that was made in Japan to promote Spyro 2 where Ripto captures Zoe. Uh, it's, it's kind of hot. You're not supposed to have the thoughts about it that I do, because, well... Alright, I gotta kill these guys normal, huh? Alright. I'm just not thinking about it. Anyway, the point is, uh, I have gutter mine. I have the key. Okay. I keep forgetting what I have and I haven't done. This controller just, like, goes all the way. It really pushes. It's so weird. I don't know if my controller just sucked, or if it's just that Xbox controllers are like this. I really don't know if an Xbox controller is even supposed to be like this, because I don't use the D-pad on mine. The XB1 controller's D-pad is... ass. That's fine, though. It doesn't have to be good. I should play it more. The only things I play on it besides Sonic Frontiers are, like, Rare Replay, mostly for Viva Pinata, um, and Fable 3, which is the best worst game of all time. And if Draco ever consents to put himself through it, uh, I would like to do a full Fable 3 thing with him where I just make fun of the game endlessly. Now, I say that, uh, I was not paying attention. But obviously, Fable 3 is also a painful game to play. And I don't know if I want to suffer that much either. Because while I do like Fable 3 a lot, and it has a lot of things about it that I really enjoy revisiting, it's also a completely shit game that I don't think anyone should play, and I don't really think anyone should uh, praise. And also, it was made by an old British white guy, so it has a million problematic things in it that I seriously can't ignore. And a lot of people are probably seriously confused about why I like Fable 3. 
because it's dumb. Pussy ass bitch. We get it. You, you're scared of everything, okay? I'm an adult. I have an adult's mentality. I'm not scared of shit. Get fucked. Whee! Hey, bitch, what's up? <laughs> I kind of forget that sometimes the enemies will just fuck with each other. It, it's like... They don't like it. They are clearly not friends. Their only unifying thing is that they hate you. They dislike you more than they dislike each other. And that is their one unifying factor. So basically, they're all Europeans. And Spyro is America. If you're wondering whether or not you can use that fan thingy to kill this guy, no, it's too far away. I've tried multiple times. Boing, 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 boing. Get wrecked. Calling those guys druids might be slightly offensive. Also, why are they called druids? Druids aren't known for moving stuff around. They're fucking wild shapers. I guess. Well, I mean, no, they're actually just- in real life, they're just hippies that, like, hug trees and, and eat nothing but vegetables, I guess. I remember when I was a kid, I'm, I looked at my mom and I'm like, what is a druid? She's like, it's somebody who loves Mother Nature. I'm like, so, me? She's like, no, they're like people who go around barefoot and they don't, like, use technology or something. I don't know. I don't know how she described it to me. It was like, it's like, it's just people who, like, really love, who really love the earth. I think that was, like, the basic explanation. I've always been kind of fascinated with that, though. I mean, I don't really know if it's my culture to claim or anything. I'm pretty sure that at least some of it is, because, like, half Irish. Which means I get to, like, explore Celtic stuff and it's not appropriation. It does not apparently mean that I get to make jokes about liking potatoes. Apparently that's too racist. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I don't know shit about how the world works anyway. I have to constantly ask my friends about how to, like, sensitivity check something. When I ask, I'm being sincere. And I think a lot of them have figured out that I'm just really stupid. Thank God for that, because having to explain it to people is awkward. Blah, 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 some old people shit, ugh. Actually, I don't remember what that guy says. I forgot he existed. That guy, this guy down here though, not like down here, but like in there, that guy actually kind of has a cool design in Reignited. Uh, if you're wondering if you can charge into these and completely fuck yourself while we're on, on these cliff edges, the, ed the answer is yes, and if you do it, skill issue. <laughs> Remember that these blue thieves haven't stolen eggs only in the magic crafter world. I think this Don't worry, I'll take care of them. This guy is so interesting looking. I like his design in Reignited. Um uh, But I also just kind of think the magic crafter dragons look interesting. Because they're all really lanky and kind of leaning a bit into I don't think that they look lazy, per se. The Dreamweaver dragons look phoned in. Wow, this guy's giving me trouble. Come here. Thank you. 
Damn, fucking rude. I don't like Alpine Ridge that much. I mean, it seems like I do. Uh, it's kind of an interesting level, I think, but it's it's also a little. Eh. That's the low point, though. Which, if that's if that's the low point, I think that's uh, pretty. That sound just like completely stacked on itself. I don't know what the pineapple heads are supposed to be. I think they're supposed to be dwarfs of some kind. Anyway, every level in this in this is way more interesting. There were things I wanted to talk about on stream tonight. And I keep not doing it because I keep getting distracted with my own incredibly insane thoughts about whatever the hell comes to mind without filter. So basically it's a normal stream night. Um, uh, let me think. Yeah, I gotta order my thoughts for a second. Give me a moment. Five. I don't have any sushi distracting me anymore, so I guess I could probably figure it out. I actually do apologize if there are people out there who find it gross when someone eats on stream. But that's just kind of a joke at this point. It has become a meme. And I also just snack basically constantly in real life anyway. Like, that's not a bit for stream. Uh, I'm just a fat ass. <coughs> Please do something about these green druids. They insist on moving everything in sight. Yep, I got it. I got you, fam. They have my gems anyway. Bitch wanna get paid. Hey, where are you going? Why did they choose to call them druids, I wonder? What was the inspiration? I always do kind of wonder about the people of this world. The fairies seem to be aligned with the dragons, but everyone else seems like they kind of hate them. The dragons seem like dickheads in hindsight. Like, they have a lot of enemies in this world. And I don't really think about it because they're all very similar to me. They all basically die in one hit, and their gimmicks tend to be negligible at best. We hate them, bugs. Good thing the supercharge makes us invincible. Anyway, wanna go see a silly bug? Look at the silly bug. Oh, wait, you missed it. Hang on, here's another one. Check it out. Wait, no, no, oh, oh, oh. Oh, did I kill them so quickly? How? What a shame, I'm so sorry. Meow. Okay. My thoughts have- I, I said or, let me organize my thoughts, and they got completely disorganized again. I am amazing at doing this. I feel like it would be easier if I felt like I was talking to someone instead of just kind of at the void. Oh! Uh, I can't bring- I can't bring the, the boys up here. Hey, friend. I think it's supposed to be a... Is it supposed to be a spider? Look at its tiny silly legs. Look at his silly legs and his silly eyes. Ow. <laughs> Look at how stupid he looks. Hey, baby. Gotta love how I get real fucking spicy power up uh, from sexy ladies. I could 
could have sworn that the sm the po smoke puffs that come off of you. I don't think I need to go this way. That's just the, the platforms that had the druids on them. Okay. And we're done. We're done from here. Okay. Um... What was I thinking? Yeah, I thought that the smoke puffs looked like hearts at one point. Keeping thoughts in my head can be somewhat difficult, I think. Um... Hmm. Okay, well, I'm just going to go over the things as they come. So here, here's the things that I really wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, the stuff that's going to be super exciting. I get midway through a stream and it's this gonna... We're gonna do this now. Lamau. Um, first of all... I don't actually... know how obvious this has been. For a pretty long time now, if I'm honest. I mean, this has probably been a, this has probably been a thing that other people have heard me discuss on stream before. But I really like streaming. I like sharing games that I like. But I don't like being a streamer. And I, I kind of never have. In fact, when I started out, I didn't even use my mic. I'll check this shit out. Look at this fucking nerd over here. Look at him. Look at this bitch. He thinks he's so cool. He wants to run around that pool and make me chase him. Nah. Get wrecked, nerd. Anyway. Uh, I've actually been doing this since, like, 2011 or something. And back then, all I, all I did was share, like, stuff with friends over Procast, or I didn't really stream games. And, like, Twitch was becoming a thing at this point. So, people would share games live, and... Some people even kind of made a business of it. Like, they made it their whole thing. Uh, instead of it just being kind of a side gig to, like, YouTube and stuff. Um, and obviously there were hobbyists, right? You're welcome. Um, and obviously there were hobbyists, right? Like, there will always be hobbyists in a space. Uh, but there were a lot more of them back then, obviously, uh, with the platform being new. It was also a lot less accessible, uh, unfortunately, which... Yeah. Yep. I don't know what I was doing there. Um... There we go. It's such an interesting cave. This is an interesting cave. It's like it opens up here, right? The cave opens up here. And then you can like kind of go inside of it a bit. And it has like this thing. I don't know. I find this geometry super interesting. When I was a kid, I really liked this space specifically because it sort of reminded me uh, of like a dragon's den. Like a proper sleeping area for a dragon. Like, they would rest and relax here and they could sun themselves right out here. Uh, oh, that's weird. You can see the other side of that from all the way over here. That's pretty cool, actually. Games had to do fog tricks and stuff back in the day, so being able to see that far into the distance in a game was unique. But with this area specifically, I just thought it was cool. It's like... Maybe a dragon never went up here to rest, but they just kept a bunch of storage and stuff up here. Uh, and like down there was just like the main living space where they could come up here. I don't, I don't know. Like it, it's just, It's just a weird thing to think about, I think. Just a weird little thought experiment about how these places aren't just places that exist. 
as level geometry to traverse, but they actually have, like, real utility. Like, this looks like, like this is obviously a pool, okay? Like, obviously this is, this is a place people go to, like, relax or whatever, or do some kind of, I don't know, magic shit with the water. Could even be a place where you summon clouds or something, I don't know. Like, this is kind of a, a magic world. And this place is neat. Like, you've got these two corridors. Uh, and then this, this big area back here with the portal. Um, I don't know. Like, Stuff like that just kind of interests me about this game because the places that you visit feel like they can be places that people live in. And I think that's what sets it apart from other platformers that are similar and that is that games like Mario, the worlds just kind of feel like they're obstacles to traverse. They don't really feel like places that people live. They don't, they don't feel like worlds that have like a purpose outside of you traversing them. I think all of the Spyro games have that advantage until you get the Hero's Tale. Everyone knows how I feel about Hero's Tale by now. <laughs> I don't think Hero's Tale feels very lived in. It has like the aesthetics of the old games, but something about the level routing makes them feel very much like everything is a pathway and nothing else. Which is kind of a shame because Hero's Tale has the kind of Jack and Daxter layout that lends itself to being a larger world than just a video game level. Anyway, let's go do the Amanda Show music level. Hold up, I need a drink. I guess I'm gonna have to explain the streaming thing a bit. And maybe not get sidetracked. Seriously. You'll know what I mean when I say I'm at a show music. Alright? It'll come up. I'll point it out. Or not. You'll hear it. Okay? You'll hear it. But yeah, I, I like sharing the games that I play. And I always like sharing them with friends. And then when streaming became more of a thing, I kind of slowly transitioned into doing it more publicly because... I already had an art platform, I may as well use my streaming setup that I use to stream stuff to friends to stream art. Why not? And then it became, hey, my I have an art audience, they want to see, they like watching me stream, I'll stream art. But the thing is, at the time, I didn't use a microphone at all. Um, excuse you, I was rude. Talking here, damn. Like, uh, I, it wasn't as common, uh, in the older days of streaming art on the internet to use a microphone either. This whole thing where everybody mics is actually kind of a new thing. Um. And I never really got used to it. Like, I guess if I'm gonna be 100% honest, I've never really gotten used to having to use a microphone. I started doing it in 2018 because none of my friends could really afford the time to sit in Discord and chat with me. And I was lonely and I, I figured I'll start using a microphone so I can interact with the actual people in chat more. Um, and uh, From there it kind of became well, Kook streams and a couple of other friends we had at the time streamed, and I figured I'm going to be more serious about this. It's clearly a thing that I like doing. Uh, and there were games I wanted to share with people. Uh, I think I've already been down there. Yeah, I've already been down there. Oh, I forgot about this little path here. I thought I was going straight to the guy right over here. Hello, friend. Get fucked. Guy just kind of waiting on you. That's a beginner's trap, by the way. Not, not excellent design. 
Old games had all kinds of dick moves on them like that. This is a cool area. It just looks like a... I don't want to say a summoning circle. It does look like a place where they would cast some magic. Or at the very least, a really cool jacuzzi. Welcome to Wizard Peaks! Anyway, down we go. Let's see how many I can bowl over to. Alright, I'll take that. Anyway. I figured when I started using a mic that it would just get easier over time to talk to an audience of people. I, I kind of assumed... Gotta love this fucking sound driving you nuts, by the way. You hear this guy and you can't see him. I love his little cloister face. Get wrecked, nerd. I think that's the last one. Nah, we still got one more. Leave that nerd up there. Hey, now. If you kill that guy early, he still spawns all of these guys uh, to avoid soft-locking yourself out of getting all the gems. Because if they didn't spawn, then you would just straight up not get them. I think that's a decent... I kind of like that, I guess. You're welcome. I like that you can't soft-lock yourself, I guess. It's, it's nice that they kind of thought about that a bit. A lot of thought went into this game, I think. I want some help. Is there help up here? Or did I consume it all? I have to come up here anyway. Yeet! Okay. Y'all was fucking Amanda show music. The guy who did the music for this game also did the music for that show, so of course they sound similar. He has a recognizable style, I think. Oh, uh, but anyway, what I was saying before. I don't know. It never got easier to put my mic on, on the internet. Like, it kind of became a thing that I got used to. But even today, uh, I still have to take a bit of time to myself to start streaming. And today it wasn't too hard, but I know from past experiences of going on a long hiatus and then starting up again that the reason for that... Get wrecked, nerd. I mashed the X button when I hit him because I know the game will kind of lock my controls so that the egg comes to me. And I have died doing that, but I know that if I mash the X button the game will give me control back faster. too many thoughts about this game. That's good. It's good to have thoughts about games. I never wanted to be like Game Grumps and just never fucking talk about the shit that I play. There's nothing more annoying to me than a streamer that like doesn't pay attention to what they're playing and only interacts with chat. Listen carefully, Spyro. Found it already. Thank you for the knowledge, though. He's talking about Sunny Flight. If you get this far in the game and you don't know where it is by now, congratulations, a dragon in the third fucking level will tell you. Oh, we have completed the left. I can leave. Cool. Oh, let's let this blow hard. Eh, it only took about half an hour. Not bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. It's, it's like... I know the reason why it got easier over time to do... To like, like today, it was super easy to start up. I was really excited. But I know that part of that is because I took months of hiatus. I had months to prepare myself mentally 
and I knew I was going to do it today. But if I do it consistently several times a week, I, I actually get anxious and burn out really quickly. And I, I don't really know why. I'm missing a lot of gems. Oh, there they are. Where am I missing gems from? Look at the way that the geometry is very simple in the distance. Even pixelated looking. I think that's actually kind of aesthetic. Like, it, it takes the actual resolution of the whole screen into account. I don't know, I think that looks really cool. That's kind of consistency to the aesthetic that I don't think would exist uh, otherwise. I also swear that look, that used to look different. I don't know if it, it looks so grainy or pixelated. Not grainy. Where are we missing gems from? Could possibly be. Pretty sure I've gotten everything from here. Anyway, yes, that is all of the dragon eggs in the game. You only see these thieves in the first few levels, uh, or at least thieves with eggs. Uh, I guess the devs figured this mechanic was getting annoying and decided to stop doing it. Thank god. Ah, eh, the thieves aren't that bad. They're basically just a, a, a mild annoyance. Fuck! I bet I'm missing them back here. Yep, there they are. Forgot to get them back here. I vaguely remembered a green and red gem. You can attack that other druid hold, uh, who raises the wall, but I've kind of forgotten how. This level is such a weird soundtrack, considering... Oh, oh. What in the world was that? Sure was gameplay. Alright, give me my sparks back. Let's go fight the boss! This is such a cool level. This is one of my favorites. And I love the music. I don't think people, when they watch me stream, they think of somebody who, like, gets anxious, like, an hour before it's gonna happen. But that happens to me a lot. It, or it did. Uh, and then I took a while off of it, not really knowing, not really feeling like I could be in the public eye for a bit. I'm small enough that I have the luxury of doing that, and I don't rely on this for money, so thank God for that, I guess. But it, it used to be something else, and it just, it's not that anymore. It used to be a thing that you just kind of point a camera at, and you point the camera at stuff that's interesting to you. Thanks for releasing me, Spyro. You have no idea how long I've been trapped in crystal, and uh, neither do I. Who are you again? Um, I'm out of here. You know, my mother loved this dragon when I was a kid. In hindsight, a little bit ableist. <laughs> but I do appreciate the writing somewhat. This writing was just not something you saw in a lot of video games. 
I mean, yep, I died. That was embarrassing. We don't we don't need to talk about that. That didn't just happen. I don't think I've ever died in that part. So I didn't really know that it just instantly killed you. I guess, like, there's no hope, right? Like, you're not getting out of that, so it's not gonna fuck around with you and waste too much of your time. Fair enough. It just, like, completely obliterated my gold sparks, though. <laughs> I know there's a couple of death pits like that, where it's like, you're not getting out of this, we're just gonna send you back to the checkpoint. Appreciate that design. Hey buddy, give me my gems. Thank you. That was the boss, by the way, if anyone was wondering. Uh, he's uh, not as intimidating as you might imagine a boss to be, but you know, he tried his best, and really just ended up blowing smoke, so... Sometimes it's just it just be like that. But yeah, I don't know. Um I guess the point of my ramble is that I've always been someone who just kinda wanted to point a camera at something I thought was cool and talk about it. And for a while I felt like I couldn't. Because now streaming is a performance. I'm gonna go dash enemies before I go to the next world, just so I can talk a bit and not feel super overwhelmed. Anyway. Also replenishing my lives. Eh, nah, nah, nah. We don't have to talk about that one, though. <laughs> that guy's sound. Streaming is kind of a thing for people. I think it's a performing art now, where you, you get a camera and you cam with your face and you set up these lights and uh, you have like a bike with cat ears on it because that looks aesthetic and uh like a lot of the gamer stuff is also kind of marketed toward people who want to get into streaming that's why all the pcs and keyboards and stuff are like gaudy with like leds and stuff i mean some of it is just people like that aesthetic but Let's be honest, it is a streamer aesthetic. I think... I guess what I'm trying to say is, is like, I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to do any of the, like, you get a camera and point and, like, you, you make your... W the space that, sh that shows up in your camera look really good. Um, and I don't definitely don't want to do fucking VTubing. I'm not that degenerate. I might have some sins behind me, but, like, I'm not gonna do that, that shit, okay? I have standards. I don't get the appeal of VTubing, honestly. Every time I see it, it just looks really cringe. Maybe it's because I've come to associate, like, putting a character first with, like, really cringe crowds of people who are kind of also disingenuous. Bonk. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't really want to go off on a, on a rant like that. A friend of mine hates it when I do that. Because they kind of want to do the VTubing thing, and I think they feel a little attacked. If my friend did it, I would support them, but I still think it's cringe. I think my- I, th I want my friends to do things that make them happy, even if it's something that I think is dumb. Because it's- it's more important for me to see them happy. I guess- I guess what I'm trying to say is just, I don't know. I kind of wanted the stuff I did to just come first and the words that I said instead of like the aesthetic I, I present. I kind of just, the most I do is that thing on the side to the left. 
Uh, that's the most effort that I really put in. So, have fun with that. It's mostly just because I didn't want to change the resolution, but I still wanted games to not look fucking horrendous. So, I put some stream graphics up that uh, I drew because I'm an art streamer anyway and I can. It looks okay. It might not be my favorite, but it looks okay. I mean, I did it in like an hour before stream one day. I needed something to put uh, between the TV. Uh, I needed something to put in that blank space that wasn't just a big green bar when I was playing Wind Waker HD because I didn't want a green bar there. That would look really stupid. Uh, and I didn't just want to slap together other people's art or other people's images. I wanted to make my own because that's who I am. Uh, I just, I basically just didn't want to get, like, hammered for plagiarism or something, so... There you go. I don't know, like... I don't think there's a market for what I enjoy doing. And I guess that's fine, because I don't take it that seriously anyway. This swamp used to look so nice, and now it's an electrified junk heap. I got you, fam. Don't worry about it. I love how big the portals are. Like, the creatures that go through these portals are massive, so they needed big portals. It's great because peacekeepers always sound like they're overcompensating. Beastmakers are actually... I don't know. Like, they, they come off as, like, actually really... Like, I'm pretty sure between a Peacekeeper and a Beastmaker, a Beastmaker would be winning an arm wrestling contest. Because it's like, you've got the Peacekeepers, they basically just act like American cops. And then you've got the Beastmakers, who patently do not give a shit. They're like the biggest thing in the room, and they just kind of know it, and they don't care. I don't know. Uh, that's that's my interpretation. They're also apparently very gentle and like like actually raising and breeding animals. And the chickens you see around are a thing they created. That's why they're called the Beast Makers. So, like, they're about as like wild and like burly as as the things that they create and tame. And that's kind of interesting, I guess. I don't know. Uh deep fucking spiral lore. These dragons do not come up in like any other game in the series, but the concept of them is loved in the fandom because it's such an interesting thing to think about. It's kind of a shame that nothing was ever done with the different dragon types and all the dragons became more homogenized in later entries. I think people hear me talk about stuff that I'm passionate about and their first thought cause, and I know this is some people's first thought because they've told me I've had a couple of people message me over the years when I'm doing stuff and they'll be like why don't you just write video essays you seem like the kind of person who would like doing it yeah I thought so too and then I tried doing it and video essays are actually more performative than streaming for an audience. Thank you for the warning about the electricity up ahead. I can certainly see it with my own eyeballs that do in fact somewhat work. Uh, they may not work very well, but I can definitely tell that the glowing blue field in front of me is probably not something I want to touch. And I've also probably figured that out on my way here. To this world. There were about two or three of them blocking my way. But thank you for your concern. These guys are like me. I wonder what song they're listening to. I wonder if they're all listening to Breakcore. <laughs> if they're all just like listening to Breakcore. 
and they're kind of like, ow. I pussied out on that one, I shouldn't have. Ah, I get fracked. Could you imagine what it's gotta be like to see if you're not even armed and you just wanna listen to music and then you, you see this fucker just run at you? Also, I'm pretty sure those guys have a Walkman. Like, I think that's what's actually clipped to their side. It's a fucking Walkman, which is really funny. He vibing. Good job, Spyro. Thanks, I thought so. That guy looks kind of cool when reignited too, actually. The way his his I appreciate the like contours that they gave him, uh, especially giving his belly a more rounded kind of spiral pattern instead of just being the standard dragon uh, stripes or, or ridges. I don't know. Uh, Sometimes, like some of the character designs look really thoughtful, and then you just got bullshit with the environments that really ticks me off. Like, why couldn't the game be consistently really thoughtful instead of just having parts of it that I think are brilliant and then parts of it that are absolute dog shit? You can say what you want about opinions and tastes, but honestly, I just think the game is inconsistent. Uh, inconsistent aesthetic, and it's really off-putting. Or inconsistent quality is what I meant to say. Anyway, I don't know. I thought I would like video essays too. I have a lot of things to say, obviously. You'd think that it would be a piece of cake to write that stuff down and put it in a video and record it. I've tried. I haven't published any of them because I recognize they all sucked, but I tried. And one of the problems that I kept running into with it was the feeling that, especially because I watch a lot of video essays, <sighs> I'm trying to think of a way to say this that doesn't sound like really mean, because I actually do like video essays. But a lot of them feel a bit like people are bullshitting. I don't think that's true for everyone. I think there's just a lot of people in in the media space that misrepresent what something is. And I don't mean they like they give an opinion on it I disagree with per se. I mean they just outright lie about stuff. And a lot of their appeal Life hack. I used to hate having to go after that guy. I used to get hit by him all the time, and then eventually I realized I can just use that chest. Uh, you can only do it once, so I hope you don't have to come to this level twice. <laughs> Using the little propeller things on those wasn't a trick I discovered until years after starting to play this game. Uh, so it's a neat little thing that you can do. It's not very efficient, so I doubt a speedrunner would ever do it, but it is... Uh, it is fun if you're a casual player. Don't mind me, just gonna go get some treasure. Recommend getting this one first, so you don't have to go all the way around again. There we go. Ah, nice. Yeah, I don't know, like... I guess... Let's save. I have a bad, bad omen in my stomach. I feel like I'm gonna have the power cut on me. That's gonna piss me off, by the way, because it'll make my computer go from like fully, fully chugging along to just in an instant. But yeah, power cuts are brutal on me. They happen in my house because our, I don't really know, like our breaker kicks. When electricians come out here, they blame us. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. 
They just say that we have too many electronics on. That's bullshit. That's not true. Of course we don't. A person can have the electronics I have hooked up. We do it all the time. Like, other people do it all the time. Why don't other people have these problems? Lying ass bitch. I think they just don't want to actually look at it more thoroughly, and they just want to blame someone else. And then they take 200 of our dollars without ever fixing the problem, and they just tell us it's our fault. Fucking grifters. Yeah, buddy, I gotta go. I can't sit here and talk. Uh, I don't know. I obviously don't need to be the kind of person who bullshits their way through a video essay, but I feel very ill-equipped to talk about something in an honest and genuine manner. I feel like it's more honest and genuine to stream it outright, but then over time that also became a lie, because when I stream something, I get frustrated sometimes, and then I just slag it off. And that inherently also feels like a disingenuous representation of something, because it's not really a representation of something played by a skilled player, it's a representation played by a poor player. And which has led me to think that also, any way you play a game is going to be a pretty dishonest representation of it, because everyone plays them differently. It's not like talking about a movie, where there's kind of a reasonable analysis on it based on what based on, like, your media literacy. There's no such thing as media literacy for how you play a game, because everyone plays them differently. How the hell do you talk about video games in a way that isn't disingenuous? I don't know how to make any of that sentence make sense. I, I think this is one of those things where a friend would hear me talk about it, and they tell me that I overthink stuff. And, I don't know, maybe? Like, I guess I can't dispute that. I mean, you see the way that I play this level. Like, I'm not bad at it. Do you think a person coming into the game for the first time would be good at this, though? No. They wouldn't know what the hell they're doing. And they would probably get frustrated. I can talk about the routing and my own, like, experience learning it. But I don't think there's really any, like, sufficient analysis for how video games work. We have, like, the vague concept of game feel, so how do you even talk about something in an educated way that can be both analyzed by other people in the space in, like, a reasonable and intellectual discussion about that thing without it just devolving into elitists telling all the poor gamers they have skill issue and all the poor gamers calling them elitists? I mean, that is kind of what video game discussion comes down to. Discussion of media has actual nuance to it. Talking about video games is really just, this is unfair, haha, -ha, skill issue. Like, come on. I don't think there's a lot of, I, I just don't feel like people can have... I mean, you can, I guess. But I feel like it ultimately does boil down to that, because you're not talking about what something means to you, or what something communicates to you, you're talking about your ability to navigate something, or, or like, do what you're asked. And that's a little bit of a different thing to analyze, and people are really bad at self-analysis to begin with, and I think because video games are a personalized experience. This is all a very long-winded way of saying I don't know how to talk about the stuff that I like. I know how to show people what I like about it, I know how to tell them what I think is neat, and I can ramble forever about it, but I don't know how to organize it, and I'm always afraid that everything I do is never going to really represent it in the way that I would like, which is a way that, that I don't know, in some cases favors the creator, I guess. How do I explain this? I feel like I'm trying to explain something complicated, but... I don't know. I guess I guess there's something about wanting to, to signal boost small things, and just like, hey, check out this cool thing I found, find out if it's good with me, or uh, I think this is good, I want people to know about it because I know it's obscure. 
uh, or, or like stuff like that is just really important to me because I've always actually enjoyed like hunting gems. I say in a game about collecting gems. You know, the practice of gem hunting as in finding, like, stuff you may have never known that you wanted or liked. But that's always been kind of important to me. Uh... Bah! Thick. Guy guy's fat. Anyway, his advice is basically don't just stop at one supercharge. Yeah. Have fun with this bullshit. Whee! Okay, and try not to get clipped on that weird piece of geometry that I know is there that's invisible to the naked eye. <coughs> Experienced players know what I mean. It's the one that'll just like hop you into the air but prematurely and then you'll die. Or you'll you'll recover. That was quite a ride, Spyro. That's what your mom said. All right. There's got to be rule 34 of that guy saying that and Spyro like cleaning himself up. I don't know. That's a thought. Thought I don't really want to think about anymore <laughs> actually. <coughs> oh, throat's dry. I think... What? Did I just kinda... Oh, I wasn't aiming for that guy. Yeah, we take those. Also, are these caricatures a bit racist? Are these racist caricatures? Because I always kinda thought they were weird monkeys. In hindsight, they might be tribal people and also... What the hell? I think they're supposed to be monkeys. Look at this silly guy and his silly feet. He has a silly attack. I used to think he was attacking me with his heart just because of where it's located, but he just has silly feet. Dude, it's weird. By the way, this song that plays in this level is actually a remix of the High Caves song. Which is really interesting, because High Caves is also a level about using the supercharge to get around. And later on, we're going to see a stage that is a build-off of all of your knowledge about... Um... As I attempt to put my thoughts to words. About what you learned here, about using the supercharge to supercharge to chain and also to navigate a level it's asking you to know where things are in that level before you even start running like basically high caves is here's how the mechanics work here's how to control the supercharge this is asking you uh to like direct it and in like a a test of like your spatial awareness yeah, you can control the thing now, but can you get it to go where you want? Can you use it to get where you want? Do you know how to get there? Do you know how to plan a route? And the knowledge is going to be tested in a later stage. I really like how stages that are earlier in the game uh, build off of this. A thing about it, I'm going to see if I can get up there real quick, okay? Let me just do this real quick. I'm kind of running past collectibles and shit. If you follow this guy down this supercharge, he will actually show you the way to go. Like, he runs the way that you're supposed to go. This is the game helping you out. But you'll kinda, most people will miss this because of the collectathon nature of this game. They'll be grabbing all the gems and stuff, and they won't really be stopping for him. They won't really be chasing him. I gotta go back there and get those collectibles. It's kind of annoying that I have to do that, but it was worth it to explain that, because I, I think that's a detail a lot of people miss. That's why I like talking about stuff I enjoy, because I can show people stuff that I know about it, that I don't think a lot of other people do. And I think... I, I appreciate it when other people do that, too. I like, I like learning about stuff that's really 
one of the coolest things that happens when I'm playing a game is when a speedrunner shows up in chat and they talk to me about how the game works. Even if I have no frame of reference to know how it works normally, uh, figuring out how it works normally and then having them explain, okay, here's how we do it or here's what we understand about it. And then, I don't know, like, I, that's such a cool... Because that's the neat, unique thing about games that other media does not have. Other media can have deep and analytical discussions about its narrative or its aesthetic or its, like, the, the techniques used to create it. But video games have a kind of urban legend thing about them or, like, playground knowledge or uh, something, something. Damn, that guy's got big wings. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. I'm missing a tanner. All right, fine. I know where it is, too. I gotta go back up there for it. Oh, wait. No, I don't. Because it's right here. I just thought about that as I was running down there. I'm like, maybe it's that chest, actually. The one that I've missed 5,000 times before. Like, that's kind of the thing, though. Like, games... I don't want to say urban legend. That's the wrong word. Games have a... A unique... Because people play games differently, you can pool knowledge on a game in a way that you can't with a movie. You can't really take two people and have them experience a movie sufficiently differently enough that those people can teach each other something about that. I, that's not even intended with video games. It's just the way that they are because they're made off of imperfect systems that can be exploited and often are just because they're 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 complicated. They're the most complicated software that exists. Well, maybe not the most complicated. I'm pretty sure it's web browsers. I'm pretty sure web browsers are the most complicated software that exists. But video games are up there. This fucker, if you talk to him too early, and if you don't want to grab that gem, he'll talk to you, and then you've got to back out of his talk dialogue, pick up the gem, and then talk to him again to go to Dreamweavers. Th th pe that, 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 that annoys me. It shouldn't annoy me, but it does, because it's such an easy thing. Just don't click on the Dreamweavers dialogue. But no, that's just, if you do... And the gem is like midair, hanging in midair. This is a thing I should have demonstrated, but it's one of those things that annoys me so bad I just didn't want to. I don't know. Um, I, I think everyone gets the point. Like speedrunners share that knowledge all the time, but you can't do that with other things. I guess that's like the trade-off with video games that we uniquely have in games that movies and stuff don't, where you can properly have a discussion about them. And you can with video games, too. But only the games that are narratively bent. Not every video game lends itself to that. It's such a different thing from, like, movies or comic books. Whereas movies and comic books have enough in common that you can apply the same analysis and, like, the same media literacy to those things. Doing it with video games is kind of hit or miss. I could probably talk about the stuff that I like in anime, and manga, and comics, and TV, and movies. But I don't have the same care for that stuff that I do care for video games. And I just don't know how to talk about video games. Apparently. I can ramble about them. I can't do that in a script. And it felt really disingenuous when I tried. Like, I was trying so hard to say something smart. Like, I had one that was talking about how Wind Waker and Shadow of the Colossus have, have really big worlds, and how the worlds present very different ideas, but they both feel kind of lonely and melancholy at the same time because of how empty they are, and how they also look like places that people used to live and how baked into the lore and the story and the world that is, and how interesting it is that both games have wildly different aesthetics to present the same idea. And that's a really cool idea until you try to write it. 
because the concept of it sounds neat. But I'm dumb as hell. And I don't really know how to get past the synopsis. Like, the observation is where the genuine aspect of that begins and ends. Everything on top of that is just... How do I make this idea entertaining? <laughs> and I think that's what I didn't like about writing essays. I didn't like the... I liked saying something that's like a cool, honest observation. But I didn't like having to make it entertaining. I didn't have to make... I didn't like having to figure out how to make it... How to make the editing look snappy and good. How to word things to tell a story about my thoughts and feelings on something I care about. Because that part feels disingenuous. Like, that specifically feels like performance. And I don't think anything I do with streaming will ever feel that slimy. I also started to notice when other video essayists were doing this, the order that people choose to put their words in, uh, the way that people choose to frame an opinion. Because there's a way to, to frame your opinions that makes them sound like facts. And most people aren't going to check. While also still having them be your opinions. It's plausible deniability. I didn't like worrying about that. I guess I just didn't like feeling like a liar. I mean, the thought was honest, but none of the legwork to explain my thought to people in a way that would keep them entertained felt that way. Hi, Dad! Hey, give me another one. No? Alright. Ow. Worth it. He just kind of genocides all the people who are waiting up there to get thrown at me. Wild. I guess he didn't want to pay them their, their air wages. I wonder about that, actually. I wonder if it's like his power keeps the gems turned into monsters. I don't know. Interesting thing to explore, though. Um, and when I interrupt his power sources, it takes away the power that he would otherwise need to maintain the gems being monsters. I tried. I get wrecked, nerd. Looks like somebody might need to call tech support. <laughs> it's the most 90s thing I've ever said, I think. By the way, in the PAL version, they made this jump specifically a little bit easier because apparently European kids couldn't make the jump. Even though all you have to do is go over here and it's easier to make that jump, European kids couldn't do it. Everybody make fun of the European kids. They're all asleep right now, so we get to point and laugh at them with impunity. Anyway, look at how cool the moon is in this level, alright? I'm gonna ramble about this for a bit, because I seriously feel like Reignited ruined this. I'm making a point of this, okay? It's, it's my fucking birthday, so I get to do what I want. Uh, it's not gonna be my birthday when I end stream, because it'll be dark. Yeah, right, you can go back through here and the door's open now, but the door closes behind you and you're stuck in this or big arena, right? This place looks like... I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a train station a little bit. 
or like one of those long houses where people hold big meetings and this it's a boss arena here that's cool right this big open space but ultimately very closed in space and then when you defeat him and you come and and you come uh, through this way now you're in a back arena and it's open sky right that's that's cool to me something about that progression from a closed space uh, that feels like the bad guy has control of it right to this place that's very open and there's something about that that feels equalizing I guess like the, the moon is witness to your battle now <laughs> instead of it just being completely shut in and only you and the bad guy and his presence takes up more space than yours I don't know I really think the sky actually makes a lot of this level. I think it looking so calm and like cold and the moon looking so high and distant. I don't know, man. This is stuff that I think about a lot. I guess because I draw environments. So this stuff is important to me. I think someone would say I'm overthinking it. I don't I don't care. Yeah, I probably. But uh, I don't know. Cope? Get my sparks back, you dickheads. Is that everything? Can I go? Yes. God damn it, I'm 1% off. Wait, why do I feel like I should have more percentage? Oh, no, I forgot a stage. Oh, I forgot a stage. I, I did the boss before I did the last... Oh, wow, I wasn't thinking. Yeah, whatever. Um, I guess the point that I've been trying to get across since playing High Caves is just... That a thing I struggled with was finding a purpose for my content. And the other thing is just kind of kind of losing a bit of that purpose as well. I mean... How do I say this? Because I'm trying to make sense of it too. I mean, I've thought about it a lot. I'm just not much of a performing artist. I I'm good at making something and then showing it to people. I like to write stories. I care about the process of writing a story, and communicating an idea in a way that is interesting and thoughtful. And I guess, to me, those things of an idea being interesting and, and thoughtful and making a person think about how they have, what their relationship with something is in a story, like when the characters are doing something, or, or like when the, when the, the reader has like a, a shared experience with one of the characters that, that makes them that recontextualizes that experience or that validates that experience for them. Stuff like that, to me, is inherently entertaining. You don't have to make it entertaining. It just is, by default. And when people try so hard to make their stuff appealing to audiences and all this marketing shit, and I'm kind of like, you don't have to do that. The idea is already good enough. Just, and, and like, yeah, execution is important. I'm not saying it's not. I just think that this chicken is still gonna pretend that it's trapped even though I it's, it's not, like, at all. There you go. Now you can't even accidentally get stuck. I hate these trees, man. <laughs> I hate these trees. Everything in this level wants to kill you. This level is like a fucking Dark Souls swamp where everything sucks forever. And bullshit tries to kill you. You get fucked over by plants and frogs, okay? Uh, 
there's a segment where everyone dies at least once, even really good players. I think nothing short of a speedrunner gets you through some of it. Like, you see the careful way I have to approach shit, right? Stuff in this level's crazy. I actually do think it's like Dark Souls Swamp. Oh wait, there's uh, stuff back here and I don't want to forget it because I will. A ching What's my percent damn it? Be on, Be the, on look the lookout for attack, attack frogs. frogs. They're, They're cold-blooded killers. killers! Attack? Frog? And it this used to be, be such a nice swamp. You say that, but I see a Dark Souls swamp. <laughs> By the way, this is cool. Misty Bog is the first stage that will really demonstrate this mechanic to you. If gems are far enough away, they will glimmer in the distance to let you know roughly in the, where in the stage they are. It's the most obvious in this stage because of how foggy it is. The fog... When I complain about Reignited's fog, I am not just complaining about an aesthetic thing, I'm also complaining about the loss of the way the game, through completely organic means, teaches you how to play it. Because Reignited doesn't do that anymore. You're just playing a different game. And the, and the game is worse. Anyway, don't go down here. This is a trap. This fairy wants... This fairy's a bitch. She fucking lies. Go this way. Uh, and suffer. I love that these enemies had specific collision for when they fell in water, but a lot of the other enemies in the game don't. Fuck these guys! I get hit by them every time. Let's, uh... Yep. Took an ass lashing. All right, I am going to die. I like call this. I call this place the gauntlet. Oh God. Okay. 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 Uh. All right. These guys just stand here. They don't really do anything. I'm worried about the frogs. Ow. Well, if you're not careful, you will get shanked. Alright. Well, I still have my sparks, so I did slightly better than usual. Thanks for releasing me. It seems like I've been trapped in here since I was your age. I can see why. I do appreciate that they know which dragons were the hardest to get to, so they have them say lines that are gratifying. That's neat. Like, outside of RPGs, people didn't really do, like, thoughtful character stuff. Anyway, those gems in the distance actually come from farther ahead in the level. Although you can't see them sparkle now, so they were basically all over there. Wait a minute, no. Yeah, I know what that is. Why am I overcomplicating this? I know exactly where that is. Like, that's farther ahead. And then whatever the hell that is, I don't know what that is. I think that's just farther back in the level, actually. I think that's one of those platforms that's farther back. They did make this area specifically, uh, when you fall down the tree trunk, look really cool and reunited. They made it look kind of swampy and like it gathered a lot of water and plants. It looks pretty good. I like it. Instead of just looking at a barren fucking waste. Thank you for releasing me. You're welcome. Go back to sleep, you fuckhole. 
Haha, <laughs> get fucked. Alright, now I, I can't really fuck around because I lost a bunch of my sparks. These pigs are a bit wily. So a thing that I came to terms with my, uh, uh kill this guy for me, EY. Kinda hoping you get both of them, but okay. Then come at that at the right angle. I also really like that, uh, you can kill enemies in these ways. It's not scripted or anything, it's just how the game works. It's really interesting. Bro. All right. I'll tell you what to do with those creatures. Smash them, Spyro. Stamp them out and squish them and squash them. <laughs> yeah, they ruined this guy and reignited. They made him sound way less interested. I don't know why I'm saving, because I don't really want to do this level over again. It wouldn't be hard the second time, because I wouldn't have to go that other way. I feel like I'm missing something down here, actually. No, maybe not. People who complain about the jumping in this game, or the, the walking being kind of kind of eh. First of all, use the D-pad, because it's way easier to control. Uh, and second of all, I don't know, skill issue. Just, like, jump in order to turn instead of trying to turn while walking. You have way more control if you jump when you turn. I think when I was a kid, that was supposed to be intimidating, but when I was a child, I'm like, ah, free! <laughs> free shit! Alright. That is... It. I also missed getting a screen cap of 69% completion. <laughs> Unfortunate. Oh well. There we go, 72% completion. And now we can go to my favorite stage, the Dream Reapers. I think... I guess... I'm trying to think about how to, how to talk about what I want to do with my streaming platform, just saying all that. The honest answer is I didn't know for months, and I figured I just needed to sit on it. I mean, <laughs> only been doing this for three hours. I think a pretty good time. I know a guy who can beat this game in two hours back in the day. Um, pretty cool dude, actually. Thought that was neat. I know his time is nothing by today's standards, but I remember it was pretty cool back then. I guess I really just wanted a way to turn my interest in talking about games into something, and I haven't, and I didn't find it. And to some degree, I, I kind of still haven't. Because it seems like every way to do that is polluted somehow. Bro. Killing me. Literally.
This is a cool level. The enemies here can be quite frightening, but you should watch the pool. I'd rather play the pool. Now you're thinking. Me, whenever I see bullshit on Twitter. Trying to think of what to say. I do want to keep making stuff. My plan going forward is to just try to figure out what to do in a way that feels like I'm, I'm fulfilling the goal I have, which is basically just to talk about stuff I like. I think the thing that I was missing for a long time was the feeling that stuff is inherently enjoyable to some people. Instead of feeling like there was a some kind of impetus to make that stuff more than it is, I think video essayists do that, and that's kind of pretentious, if I'm honest. You're welcome. These guys are all feather dragons and reignited. I think it's super cool. Weirdly enough, when they were going to redesign all the dragons and reignited, I made a joke like they should make all of them feather dragons and give them like wings that look like starlight and stuff. I didn't expect that to happen, so apparently I was just on the same brain wavelength as the uh, as the artist. Probably the one time that me and the artist have ever had an agreement about literally fucking anything. Hmm. Yeah, this is the right way. One bitch of a glide if you don't know that this is here. You can learn it's here from the return home portal uh, from that platform. Getting this guy to roleplay on a, a US SWAT team by making him shoot dogs. Thanks, friend. I guess now I think the stuff that I do can be inherently enjoyable. I, I just have to be somewhat better about not having brain fog or cloudy thoughts. I think it's easier with some types of games than others. But I also... A friend of mine pointed something out to me a while ago. That in order to stream long term, to really do it, you have to really enjoy being in the spot. And he's pointed out to me that I never have. I never seem like I have. Oh, this guy's just- his light's just gonna be on forever. Uh, when you- when you hit him the first time, he's, it's off forever. But now it's on forever. I kinda like this little detail. I'm not sure why. Something about this guy just being different makes him feel like he's got a bit of a different lore to him than everyone else. I don't know. It's a neat little vibe. And again, uh, this level, better than any other, demonstrates the kind of, like, lighting that can exist in a game like this. Because of the, the technology at the time, like the vertex shading the PlayStation had, and the way that it colored stuff. Like, other things could not do this. I think this feature was, like, unique to the PlayStation. The N64 had a completely different way of rendering lighting. That was also unique to the N64, by the way. I'm not dissing the N64. It has, like, a complex way of doing that that cannot even be properly replicated in the PC port of Mario 64. It actually struggles with it, because whatever the N64 is doing is so, like, complex and specialized. And it's really interesting. But the PlayStation has its own specialized stuff. Like, the way everything was just so fucking bespoke back then is cool. I mean, it's not great, and it's not pragmatic, and I'm sure that every engineer in the universe hated fucking working with it. Hi, Arctic. Spyro. I'd love to help you catch Nasty, but I really hate being trapped in crystal again. Well, that's what I'm here for, bitch. 
Also, that guy looks really cool and reignited. Another one of my favorite designs. I say I hate this game, uh, or I hate reignited. I have a lot of nice things to say about it. I have mean things to say about it later. Hey, bitch. Well, I'm done. Time to kill myself. Haha, <laughs> psych. You can walk on this. See, I discovered this as a little kid. There is a streamer, uh, I think it's Deo Man. He used to be the top speedrunner, but I think he's been, like, trading it with Laura for a bit. And between the two of them, uh, um, apparently none of the, neither of them knew about this. I think they learned this from me. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Uh, I didn't lurk on his stream. A friend of mine told him about me, and he learned this from me. So I get to say that I taught the two top. I say that I get to top one of the two one of the two top players in in the speedrunning community about this weird little oversight. And an interesting thing about that oversight is that in the reignited version, they actually made this area a solid floor that has purple lights in it. It's referential to this oversight. That's such a cool little detail that I appreciate them leaving in. The person talking in chat last is someone I have known for many years, by the way. Uh, I guess he was just able to jump in because it's my birthday. That's cool. I appreciate it when people can say hi. You're welcome! Like, I don't know where all the thank you for releasing me dragons are. Hey, buddy. Kill this dog for me like a US SWAT team member. Okay, fine, don't. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's looking for a promotion. <laughs> okay. All right, the turtle's too short. Ow. To be fair, I did just run right into that bullet. Sometimes I get the things I deserve for being impatient. Whoa, check out that graphical glitch. Neat little glitch. Wonder why it's cyan, though. That's an interesting bug. Like, it's not even white. It's like off-white cyan, kind of. Weird. Anyway, this detour has been interesting. It's been a whole, like, half of the level you'll never know is there unless you know that little corridor down there. Hello, friends. I have come to collect my dues. And now I don't have sparks. Perfect. Ugh, I have to walk around and get these gems myself. Fine, I guess. Although if you charge, it'll always pick them up automatically because the game doesn't really want to have to deal with. You know, I think you just. Yep, I just fucked everything up. Okay, so I, I don't know. I, I kind of like that it doesn't make you because charging into a chest has a different thing for flinging gems in your direction to compensate for. I'm about to die. Uh, compensate for. Oh, alright. I'm not as stupid as I think I am. Neat. Watch me die the second I leave this world. Whee! This is such a cool level. I love Dark Passage. Dark Passage is neat. I like how there's just a whole part of the level you'll never see. And it's a really long part of the level if you're not looking for that one little thing that you have to jump off a cliff to find. Oh! Yeah, I'd rather not die. That would be embarrassing. It would be funny, but it would be embarrassing. Give me my shrink ray. Thank you. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Um, where I was going with the streaming thing is that since I have kind of accepted there is an inherent value in the things that I do, 
but at the same time also kind of accepting that I might not necessarily be cut out for this too much. I made a list of games that I want to play on stream. Come here. Bastard. Oh, here's a fun guy. Welcome to the Dreamweaver, General. While chasing Nasty's minions in this world, you must expect the unexpected and prepare for what is not there. There was a time in my life when I released that guy and didn't kill all the enemies around here. So the second that his animation ended, I got kicked in the head by one of those little guys. And my mother starts laughing. She's like, he told you to prepare for what wasn't there. Also, that sounds fucking paranoid. He should prepare for what is not there. Okay. I don't even know where that advice is supposed to be useful. I'm not sure there's anything in this in this world that actually does that. Except that there's like a bunch of secret doors. And I guess the fools make stuff appear out of nowhere. Yeah, well anyway, um... I made a list of games I want to play on stream. It's games that I've wanted to play since 2012 when I started to stream games in the first place to people in, in public and not just my friends on Skype. There were games that I either couldn't play for a long time due to emulation issues, lack of access, a shitty PC that couldn't run them, or other factors. Uh... Or they're just new favorite games that I discovered I really liked and wanted to share and never have. Or they're games I played a long, long, long time ago on stream uh, and feel like I'd rather stream them now. And by long time ago, I mean under a different username. My Twitch channel got reset at one point, but it's been here for a lot longer than you'd think uh, because my stats got reset when I changed my name on uh, but honestly, that list is, it's, it's not short, okay? There's like three RPGs on it. It's not ending anytime soon. But it's not getting any longer either. Gay shit about fairies. The gayest dragon. What I was saying is, that list is pretty long, okay? It's it's a long list. And it's not getting longer. The games that are on it right now, uh, generally, are going to be the games that are always on it. Uh, it, it will not be added to. And when that list is exhausted, my current plan is to just uh, stop. Uh, I'm probably not going to do this anymore after I exhaust that list. And I think this is better for me because there are things that I really wanted to do. I wanted to do them for years. Uh, but the way that I've been going about everything is to kind of just meander between one thing and another. And I haven't really thought much about what about how to approach the things I want. I haven't had a methodical approach. I haven't had a point where I can pick up a project and say, here's what this looks like now, and here's what it looks like at the end. And I think I need that. I can't just do something in perpetual forever. That's where my burnout's coming from. I do not know what is gonna happen when the list is exhausted. I just know I'm not going to be doing... I'm probably not going to be doing this. I'll probably always stream art. By the way, this is the... This thing right here... This is the only chest with a one-pointer in the whole game. This is the only one. What a strange waste of a model in a game... On the PlayStation, where disk space is finite. It's just this one pointer chest is 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 in this part of the level and no other exists like it in the game. Just this one single one. Isn't that neat? It's one of a kind. 
Like, yeah, there's other chests that you do this and they make the gem come out, but this is the only one with a one pointer in it. I think that's neat. It's one of a kind. Practically a national treasure, honestly. And now it's gone. Yeah, I don't know. Um But like I said, it's not it's not a short list. It's basically every game I've wanted to play. The only way that it would ever get longer is if another game I've wanted to play for a long time suddenly became way more accessible. But currently, I think almost every game I've wanted to can be accessed now through emulation or um Honestly, somehow, the Xbox having insanely good backwards compatibility. I think the only game that's really difficult to play would be Spyro Dawn of the Dragon because it's a PS3 game. And pretty much every PS3 game, like Okabu or something, they're like tentatively on that list. I do not know if they will stay on that list simply because... Well, PS3 streaming's a bitch. Stupid HDCP bullshit. <laughs> Got something in my nose. It's annoying me. I got to this level, I might have to blow my nose. But yeah, I'm always gonna stream art, and the simple reason is because AI is getting scary, and streaming art is a reasonable proof that I do, in fact, draw my own art. So no matter how bad my art looks, no one can ever accuse me of AI generating it. Ah, Spyro, thanks. Supercharge will get you to new places here in Lofty Castle, too. Yeah, what happened to Lofty Castle 1? What the fuck did you do with it? Did you sink it into the star ocean down there? That's the name of a game. I've never played it. I wonder if it's any good. Probably not. I mean, I, I, I probably wouldn't like it. I'm sure it's fine. Interesting thing is that in Reignited, you can continue your supercharge from here and actually launch yourself up to a secret. It grants you one of the skill points that's hidden throughout the game. That doesn't exist in the original. It's a nice little thing they added in Reignited. I always say at the beginning of these streams how much I don't like Reignited, and I end up saying nice things about them every time I play. What am I looking for? Oh, yeah, the chest. It's down here. But as far as games that I'd like to get to go, games that I think I could talk about, games that I'm really excited to play, I'm gonna start one of them immediately. Not like, not, not tonight. I got shit to do in the morning, unfortunately. But like, uh, maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, definitely, actually. I'm going to begin, I don't know what my stream schedule is going to look like, but I'm going to start playing through, uh, Thank you for releasing me. you're welcome, dickhead. Hey friend, goodbye. I'll probably always do the Spyro streams also, just because I do them once a year. I play this game once a year on my birthday. I would play it either way. As long as I have access to hardware to play this game, I would play it once a year on my birthday. I've done it since I was 11, because I beat the game for the first time when I was 11. And by beat, I mean 100% completed. I got the nasties loot for the first time on my 11th birthday. And then I went to Red Lobster, so that was nice.
I'm pretty sure I can't get him with this. Nah, that's too far. Ah, oh, finally. It's been stuck forever. Oh, here's something fun. Meow. 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 Convenient. It's like DoorDash, but for weird chicken things. I believe they used to call that meals on wheels. I do not think I am even close to finished. No, I am. The last ones are up there. There we go. The Dow. Anyway, the next game I'm going to play on stream is a game that I've wanted to play for a long time. Specifically, about four years! <coughs> and here's why I couldn't. The emulation on it uh, went from you will crash if you play as a girl to you uh, can mostly play it but half the textures will glitch out to now the game has a weird texture glitch that is mostly ignorable unless you care about authenticity and also it had to do with something on your character so it literally could not be ignored. And then eventually, finally, after an ungodly amount of time, someone has figured out a weird thing with the 3DS's architecture that has made emulating this game possible. Now I can play my favorite 3DS game on stream. Uh, which for the curious is Fantasy Life. It's my favorite 3DS game. I love it to pieces. I continue to play it to this day. It's a comfort game for me. It's a 10 year old game that I continue to play. Oh, you can actually ram into that guy if you keep charging, by the way. I just didn't think about it. Before he turns big, because he always turns big at the same game tick. If you keep charging, he doesn't complete his transformation as far as the game's code is concerned. You can still kill him with the charges if he's a small enemy. No, that doesn't still work in Reignited. Also, these things? I think the the enemies in this game are instanced differently depending on if they have a gem or if they have a life bottle. Life ball, sorry. Because these guys? If I kill them right now, they will be small the next time I load the stage. I won't have to go up there and hit that thing again. They'll just be in their small state. And I guess that's taking advantage of the way the enemies are kind of instanced differently. Either that or the game figured out how to actually uh, read the internals. But honestly, I think it's just kind of a, a different instance. That, that seems like it would be easier to do. I don't know. I'm kind of talking out of my ass. Hello, Spyro. Nicely done. The only female dragon in the games, which raises several questions, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, not the least of which being... Does she just birth all the eggs? If Hero's Tale did anything good, it's adding more female dragons. Actually, it just adds, it adds the one, doesn't it? She takes care of the nursery. The implications of that can't really be overstated. The fools you see in this world are annoying as shit. Oh, and there's and there's the thumbnail. Incidentally, I played this game with Kook a couple of years ago, uh, and Kook, being a dumb motherfucker that she is could not figure this out. Okay? You see this fucker? The way he dances around? She would attack this? 
and she would be so confused. She would look around and didn't know what to do. She'd be like, what did it do? And I'd be like, sitting here with my head in my hands. Like, do you not know how to look around? The answer is no. Oh, uh, she didn't apparently. So I'm like, talk to the dragon and the dragon will explain. She goes back and talks to the dragon because she keeps skipping all the cutscenes. All right, look. Here's what the dragon says, all right? Here's what the dragon says about this. The fools you see in this world are invincible, but that does not mean they shouldn't be attacked. Sounds all right to me. He tells you to look around, right? Okay. Or at least he tells you that attacking them has a purpose. It's not for nothing. And she cannot for the life of her figure out what this guy has. And eventually, I tell her to look at this thing over here. And she's like, how was I supposed to figure that out? And I, I'm kind of sitting here like, by looking with your eyeballs that work better than mine. And I figured this out when I was eight. Her honest-to-god excuse for why she couldn't figure this out was that she's autistic. First of all, yeah, but also, that's not a fucking excuse, come on. <laughs> it was honestly the most potato thing I've ever seen. She can rules lawyer me in a game she's never played before, in a board game she's never played before, okay? But somehow... This motherfucker cannot, for the life of her, figure out how to actually... I'm doing Jacques before I'm doing Haunted Towers. Uh, because I've decided to do it that way. Fuck the police. We're definitely not finishing this before I hit 12 o'clock. Uh, but that's okay. The point is, I'm really excited about starting on a game that I've wanted to play for a while, and that stream is going to take a while. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be beelining the game at all. It's going to be played at a pretty relaxed pace. So, I'm probably going to also play other games in between. Games that might be shorter, in case I want a break. And especially if there are games that I just really want to play again. Like, Alicon is on that list because I never beat it on stream. Okay, I take that guy and get all these gems so I don't have to come back down here. Oh, and also these. If I missed those again, I'd be annoyed because I've missed them before. I've missed them every time I've played this level, I think. Get that guy. Grab this guy. Grab those chests. Fall down here. All right, gamer. This guy's name is Uniki. I wonder what he says. Thank you for releasing me. How very unique of him. I think at this point the devs were taking the piss. Considering the rest of this game's humor, I think the devs were taking the piss is a fairly accurate walk away. Let's see if I can get all of them at once. One, two, three, four. Gamer. Absolute gamer skill on display. Hold still. Thank you. But yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, because it's a comfort game for me and I adore it to pieces. Uh, I may even switch between other comfort games. I also want to play the Dog Island on stream, a game that none of you have heard of, but that I hold close to my heart. Other games on that list, like I said, are Alicon, because I never finished it, but I think it's really good. It's like Pokemon Snap, but actually good. Um, hmm, other games. Uh, I'm not gonna play Tomba again. I, I kinda want to. But I feel like Tomba and Aquaria, well, they're games that I want to revisit. I've already played them pr fairly recently. Uh, and it's kind of on me that I haven't uploaded the VODs. Mail Time will be revisited. 
I feel like uh, the bugs that plagued it and that ruined it for me the first time have sufficiently been addressed. I'm gonna have to get these guys again because it wasn't fast enough. That ticking sound, like, spikes my anxiety, and I cannot explain to you why. Something about it just makes me so anxious. I hate that sound. They changed it a bit and reignited, and I didn't know how to feel about it. On the one hand, it's not faithful. On the other hand, I, I like not feeling a mild amount of panic when I hear it. Uh, give me that chest. What I say when all of my lesbian friends join chat? It's not creepy, it's reciprocal, I promise. Because for some reason I ended up with all the gay ass motherfuckers. Half my friends ended up being trans, so they're basically just lesbian decompression bombs that found their way into my Discord server. I'm surrounded by hot girls and I don't know what to do with myself. Revelo, or Revelo. Watch out for flying boxes. You mean like that? By the way, Kook one cycled this guy and then he she couldn't progress in the stage because she killed the boss too quickly. It was really funny. She had to start all over again. I've never seen anyone do that. I've never seen anyone, like, kill Jacques before Jacques is supposed to be killed. I didn't even know you could. It was some fucking magic that she managed to do it, and then she fucked herself over because he isn't supposed to die. I mean, he's so hard to kill that I can't even do it on purpose to show people. Like, that's so crazy. Anyway, uh, interesting thing about this level, I think it's the only boss level with more than one dragon in it. Nasty's level is the only level with no dragons in it. Besides the flying stages, anyway. Time to go do Haunted Towers. Ha-ha! See? You can, you can kill him, like, instantly. Uh, but yeah, um, I'm going to... That's it. Uh, and no matter what haphazard way I go through that list, because that list is static, I still feel like I'm completing things. I'm working towards something. Even if that something is the retirement of whatever the hell this stream has become. I'm not saying it'll go away, because I'll always stream hard. I just don't really know what it'll be after this, because I don't really know what to do after this. In all honesty, I might not even finish that list. It's just nice to have something to work toward, considering what my life's gonna be like. Um, I might end up going back to college, if everything works out. I'm gonna find some way to get out of this fucking hell situation I'm in, where I'm disabled and can't even work, and because I'm afraid of losing my benefits, I would like to find a way to have some independence, and unfortunately I can't do that without torching my benefits. So, I would like to, if I can handle it, and my fucking medical problems don't shoot me in the foot here, because I have the medical insurance, because I actually fucking need it, it turns out. I'm gonna have to go kiss that fairy again, because I fucked around out here. That's not very, that's not very gamer of me. Alright, let's be gamer about this. Get wrecked. Wrecked and get wrecked. I don't know why that like collapsed knight had a gem in him. Was he kind of just sleeping? I don't know how the logic of this game works. I'm pretty sure that's it actually. I don't. I think the fairy juice will wear out before I get. It, it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter. I'm, I don't have to be that. With it. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. 
I basically just want to find a way, assuming I can, of getting decent benefits, decent medical, decent like medical coverage, by getting a crazy good job, uh, and maybe at some point also having the opportunity to leave the fucking country because holy shit do I hate this country now. It sucks here. Our transit is garbage. Our public transit is garbage. Our healthcare is a disaster. Most of my friends are in Europe anyway. And I'm tired of half the government being run by really open and shameless neo-Nazis. So, that's cool. Land of the free. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's fine, actually. Come back to that later. Gay! Talking about fairies' kisses. Anyway, I don't know if I'll be able to finish that list because of that. I'm gonna like all if I can manage to even get back in. All of my time is gonna be taken up with that. I don't really understand why the government doesn't just like compulsively give people like medical aid. Like free healthcare would actually pay for itself if you let us pay into taxes. Literally all I do is take from them now. Just let me have a job. Honestly, even if I can't get the hell out of America, it'll be nice to just get the hell out of this house. I love my family, but uh, I would I would like my own place. Mer. But small goals are nice, and a small goal I have is just figuring out what to do with with my various platforms. You can have a small goal while working toward a larger one. In fact, I think that's probably healthy. Like, don't have too, don't have too many big goals at once, but it's fine to have smaller things to, to do in between the bigger one, because if you just hyper-focus on one thing all the time, uh... I blanked a bit and forgot where to go on this level for a second. <laughs> Alright, now, remember what I mentioned. Treetops. Teaching you about spatial awareness. See this platform? It's probably not going to be much of a secret, right? That if you're really looking for where the hell to go next, You'll see this thing, this ledge out here, right? How do you get there? I can tell you right now, your glide is not big enough. What do I do? Hmm. Hmm. Well. You see those steps that lead up here? I wonder why this thing right here isn't also steps. In fact, I wonder why it's rather ramp-shaped. Going through the exact process that I, as a child, did to figure this out. Up here, and we want to go there, right? Like, over there, okay? Roughly in that direction. Well, here's this thing right here. And a couple of turns away, it's mostly a straight shot from here. So you just kind of got to... Navigate your way around. Think about where you come out on. Go down here, and here we go! Hey! I died 11 times doing this on Reignited because of how garbage the supercharged physics are. Seriously. That is the final test of everything that you learned in high caves and treetops. The payoff 
is showing you a glimpse of an area that you don't know how to get to. And then kind of hinting at you through the level design that exists with the ramp-shaped thing you've already come up against, contrasting it directly against some stairs, which lead you to ask the question, why aren't all of these stairs? Why is one of them a ramp? How bizarre. And basically showing you at the vantage that you can see the place you can't get to, another place you've probably already been to and do know how to get to, and you can kind of mind map the pieces together in your head from there. You've become a master of the supercharge. Great work. I don't think I could have said it better than this guy just did. That's the point. There's the payoff. That's great, right? And I'm talking about a thing that spans three worlds, okay? Among all the things you do in this game, the supercharged stuff is my favorite because of just how interesting that is. Mechanically speaking, it seems almost planned in like the most haphazard way, but it's such a thoughtful thing. Like, I don't think they could have done that by accident. And, 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 and it's not, it's actually really difficult to think about stuff in, in that kind of macro. Usually people think about the moment-to-moment -moment stuff, right? Oh, by the way, this fairy, uh, this flame breath does not run out, so I can basically just go ham with it. By the way, reignited fucking ruined this level. Not even just because of the supercharges, like, ghetto as hell in this game, and reignited. But also, look how cool the sky looks. Look at this cool, like, yeah, it's cool, right? I don't necessarily know where the light source is coming from up here. This light source is a bit weird. Where is that coming from? Because it looks like some kind of star is up there in the sky, but it's not. Because... Oh, by the way, to get down from here, you just go in here. Little hatch. This is where the sun is supposed to be. It's down there. If you fall off the level, you fall into the sun. Isn't that cool? It's almost like Lofty Castle is the reverse, right? And then you have this, Haunted Towers, just kind of floating above the sun. And I know the light source is supposed to be down there, because check out this, like, vertex lighting on the bottom of these things. That's so interesting, right? I can't get a good look at it, but you can actually get the sun to look like a round ball, and I'm not sure how to, how to do it. Anyway, I just wanted to share that. It looks like the reverse of Lofty Castle. It's almost like Haunted Towers is upside down, right? I didn't show Lofty Castle that much. I should have probably looked at the sky a bit more. But it looks like it's in twilight forever. The upper part of it looking like the daytime and the downward part is like space it's such an interesting aesthetic like it's so and for this game it would be unique because who in the world can pull this off in in like an, uh, an old 3d platform where you'd really have to think about how to design the skyboxes the amount of thought that went into this stuff is so cool to me Incidentally, uh, I found out that Gabe's birthday is right after mine. Um, and I know this because I rolled over to 12 o'clock during one of my streams. And my request for my birthday is, can you please not be edgy? And he's like, well, now that it's my birthday! 
Uh, the request still stood, by the way, because I was still live, and I did not want to get banned. His brand of edgy would get me banned. Actually, so would my brand of edgy if I didn't rein it in. Twitch doesn't let you use reclaimed slurs for some reason. I guess they figure it's too hard to police. This is why I didn't really worry too much about... God damn it! God damn it! I know where I'm missing gems! Titties and balls! Titties and also balls! Okay. This is stupid, and it actually tilts me a little, okay? Watch this bullshit. Watch where I've missed gems. Right up here. Literally one of the payoffs for getting that fairy is being able to come out here comfortably. I've been in this level so long that I started playing the High Caves music. Isn't that cool? It's like self-referential to the High Caves music. I don't think that's on purpose, by the way. I am pretty sure the music that plays in this game is like an, a glitch. It's like an overflow bug that they just kind of kept in. Kind of neat, though. Neat little accidental symbolism. It goes back to that thing I said about games being quite complex. To the point where you can have completely different experiences and interpretations in them in a way that you can't really have in anything else. Uh, oh, I still have to do the... the icy flight. Alright. Yeah, see, they're small now. I can just go through here without problems. I'm really excited to stream uh, Fantasy Life, though. It's a game I've wanted to stream for a while. I do not know what my time slot's going to look like. Oh, I'm kind of spacing out a little. Okay. That was embarrassing. Even though there's two guys and there's two platforms, I think the first guy you hit will always raise the first platform. So they're not corresponding to one of those platforms specifically. It's just that the first one you hit will always make the first platform rise. Which is kind of interesting. It gives you a little bit of a, of a margin of error. I, I don't know if that makes sense or if I can like demonstrate it. If I remember, I'll demonstrate it when I get out of here. Icy Flight is chill. Haha, <laughs> pun. Oh, oh, shit. My controller. It messed me up for a second. We may be in trouble. Ah. Alright. These controls are a bit weird. I keep forgetting that the flight controls are so weird for me because I'm not used to playing with a fucking 8-bit do. It, it's, it's fine. I got it. I got it. I hope. I don't got it. All right. Take two. Ugh, got something in my throat. Got mucus running down my throat, actually. It's kind of gross. Well, anyway, um, hopefully I'm going to be able to stream around between 6 and 8 
is a sweet spot for me. Uh, you're supposed to do it at the same time every day, but we all know my consistency is dog shit. Ah! I hope I went in the right tunnel. I did. I didn't know. I'm not completely stupid. What the hell? Wow, I just completely missed. I'm struggling. It's pathetic. Alright. Final stretch! Here we go. Speaking of nasty... Give me a moment before we before we throw hands. Hey, didn't I already free you? Sure did. You only get Delbin before you beat Nasty Nor. He's replaced by Magnus when you do. So technically missable cutscene. But all he really tells you is you're in Nasty's world. Uh, go kick his ass. Alright, give me a moment. I gotta go blow my nose. I'll be right back. Oh, uh, before I go, because uh, this might take me a second, I don't really want to be up past one, so hopefully we can finish this in the next half hour, ideally. That's the goal, anyway. Uh, but I guess we'll see. All right, really, really need to be right back. Okay, and now we're back. Didn't think anybody wanted to hear me do it on stream, so... Cleared my airways. Probably that spicy sushi I ate has like awoken my sinuses. <laughs> anyway, this is just a stray gauntlet. So, this is gonna go by fast. Assuming I don't fuck up and do something exceptionally embarrassing. There's like an interesting thing in Twilight Harbor though, where you had to find some gears and reignite it. I don't know, I thought that was interesting. Oh, wait, why did I do that? I didn't have to do that. I do this over here. So, the normal stream schedule has been 6 to 8 for a while. I wish I could do it in the daytime again, but unfortunately I've got stuff going on now. Which means doing it in the daytime is going to be extremely impractical. Unless something changes with my life. The tentative plan right now is to start between 6 and 8, which isn't great. That's like a two-hour margin. In all likelihood, it's going to be at 6. Because i got to do shit in the, in the daytime way too often to be up late at night. And this stream was going to start at 6, but uh, the game that I was playing with my friends ran a bit late. And I asked if they wanted to stay and play Cards Against Humanity, but uh, they're pretty tired. Like I said, mostly Europeans. That's okay, though. Uh... Keep up the good work, Spyro. 
I expect Nasty's really starting to worry about you. I mean, I would be. Like, a single child is apparently taking out his entire operation. Not very good security. What's kind of interesting is these guys look like the balloonists. Leaving me to have questions regarding the balloonist's allegiance. Is balloonist even a real term, honestly? Is that a thing you can be? And if so, sign me the fuck up. Bonk. Right on the dick. The devs spaced that shot to go right in the dick. To a guy who's already wearing underwear. He's not even wearing a cup under it. I know that because it's still flammable. Also, why do these guys all wear the same underwear? Do they all just shop at the same place? Maybe it's like standard issue. I think when I was a kid that was funny. But as an adult I've become jaded to it. So if you've never seen this game before for some reason, or you have seen it and have never seen this far into it, yeah, the 90s had some pretty... It, it, this humor's pretty standard. It's a lot more tame than what stuff like Gex was doing, I'll tell you that much. One of the tentative questions is, should I put Dex on the bucket list stream? The answer is probably no, because there's nothing I can stand listening to less than what Gex's voice sounds like. A friend tells me I should hold off and wait for them to remake it. I'm not gonna do that for the simple fact that I don't like half the remakes that come out. Harvest Moon remakes straight up fucking disrespect the game so hard that I'm actually offended one of my friends wants to play the Friends of Mineral Town remake before Stardew Valley, a vastly, in a vastly superior game to anything that has come out of either Natsume or Marvelous in the last few years. Apparently Marvelous doesn't give a fuck about its own fucking uh, its own its own like source material because it's constantly disrespecting it with remakes. Wow. I know Parappa reference. Yeah, let's get the show on the road, buddy. I think for some people, watching these streams might be repetitive. Uh, because... Well, I make the same jokes every time I read a dragon, but... Also, I don't really know how much I have to talk about between years. So if you ever find yourself watching them back to back, and they seem repetitive, well, I'm a, a boring person. If you wonder where the 2023 stream went, we don't talk about that. I will say that since then, with the problems I was having with a friend, I have largely patched them up with the same person. So that's nice. I, at least I think I have. I hope. I'm not going to pretend our friendship is back to normal. Because, I'm gonna be honest, what was normal for us was probably pretty toxic in the first place. But I, I kind of prefer where it is now. I guess. I mean, it seems a lot more stable, and he seems a lot happier. And I feel like we can talk about stuff a little easier. And I had this kind of anxiety around him that I didn't realize I had before. And now that I don't have that feeling, it wasn't even anything he did. I was just self-conscious. 
Like, he's never done anything to... to merit that kind of anxiety. And now I don't feel it anymore, and we're both just happier. This guy's got such a gentle disposition, honestly. Not in like a timid or weak way, just in like a generally pretty calm or relaxed way. He's, he's so easy to be around. Actually, I love the way his voice sounds. That's a weird thing to talk about on stream, though. But I guess it's also just like the perfect embodiment of who he is as a person. Like, he sounds so so calm. He doesn't really talk unless he has to. When he does, it sounds like thought out and measured. I don't think I've ever heard him stutter. It's, it's a weird kind of, like, silent confidence I don't think most people have. Fuck Reignited for ruining these guys. I was gonna say it. I was gonna say it, okay? Fucking giving them water guns instead of the, like, the... At least make the bad guys look dangerous. You don't want to put AK-47s in a kid's game, fine. Give them laser guns or something. Give them something that makes them look, like, dangerous. Terrifying. Fucking water guns. Game super soakers. Fuck off, man. Like, they're thugs in a harbor. It's the, the fucking... That's their thing. The other guy still has his grenades and his fucking combat knife. Come on. Fucking Americans and their weird-ass virtue signaling. I don't get that either. Throughout my entire K-12, never once did we have any gun threats. I had like four bomb threats though. <gasps> that was our claim to fame. Oh, you come from a high crime city? How many gun threats did you have in school? Literally zero. But four bomb threats throughout my entire K-12. Two of which shut down school. Uh, one of which we didn't even go to school for. And the last one, uh, we just ended up sitting in outside for about an hour uh, while they looked for it and found it and sent us all back to class. I mean, it wasn't exactly uncommon. This is just me slagging off soccer moms. To be fair, that's always a great demographic to slag off. I'll piss off Rambo. There is something kind of badass about like charging into a guy who's got a machine gun and just like wrecking his shit. Blah blah nor commandos. They better be on the lookout for me. Give me that life. I have no idea how to use the glide climb glitch thing to my advantage, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. I've also discovered a slight irregularity with how this game works that I've never been able to capitalize on. Where if you hit this wall with that supercharge just right, you can like launch yourself really far into the air. And I have no idea how to replicate it, but I swear to god it's a thing.
Get fucked. I went through a Dark Souls swamp and got fucked over by trees and frogs. Do you think you scare me? I don't think so. Honest to god, these guys are easier to deal with than fucking Misty Bog and its shitty ass trees. Probably says a lot that guys with assault rifles are way less intimidating than the, the fucking wildlife in a swamp. Like, your guns are not gonna protect you against like 50 wild frogs. Everything? No. Balls! By the way, I have to make it to the end of each level. It is not enough for me to simply be in the level. I must touch the return home thing every single level. What did I miss? God damn it, I know what I missed. Because I wasn't thinking about it. talk more about the games that I want to play on the list when I start playing Fantasy V tomorrow. Again, I don't know if I'm going to stick with it because it's such a long game, but I'm excited to play it and talk about it uh, because it's consistently been one of the comfort games that I've gone back to when I really need something to feel good about. Uh, so, like, to put into perspective how much I like it, Animal Crossing is a series near and dear to my heart, except for the Switch one we don't talk about one, that one sucks. Uh, and Fantasy Life, I have twice as many hours in that as I do in Animal Crossing New Leaf. That should give you a pretty good idea about how much I like it, when it, like, outlives a game series that I will consistently put the most amount of hours into. And it's no longer my birthday. Unfortunate. Oh well, it's still technically my birthday in Hawaii, so... It counts. I mean, it's still technically my birthday. I mean, it's still technically my birthday uh, in parts of America. Is that everything? Eh, it looks like it. No, not this gem. This arena looks pretty cool, by the way. Free. Thank you. Spiral music always sounds very cool. And this level has like a very unique instrument. It's like a... A, a descending... I... A something or other. God. Alright. Either way, we're about to finish this game. So maybe I should finish all of my thoughts real quick. But I think I've already finished them all. It's just... Hey, I'm gonna do a thing now. Um, I have a goal in mind for streaming. I don't know if I'll reach it, because life stuff. Tomorrow I start playing a game I care about because I can finally emulate the damn thing. I have a 3DS, I have it. It's just, you can't capture from that without 
doing some fucky shit with a hacked 3DS. My 3DS isn't hacked, and I don't want to go through the bother. Anyway. Oh, I was too slow. Oh, bitch, come here. It's not my fault you have so much fucking treasure. Both Hamtaro games are on that list, by the way. Oh, I should watch Hamtaro. Uh. But yeah, um. I would love to stream for longer tonight, because I'm really feeling the energy, but unfortunately, I have adult things to do tomorrow, so I can't just be up for like an infinite amount of time as much as I would enjoy, enjoy that. Uh, yeah, so... I guess I'll just have to save all of my, my fun little energy for tomorrow. When we begin anew. Get fucked! Hey, get fucked, nerd. Free and easy. GG easy, bitch. Sorry I took so long. I kind of forgot about you. What about Ganasty Ganork? Nasty Nork? His toast. So now there's order again in the Dragon Kingdom? Well, mostly. I've still got some treasure to pick up. What will you do next? I'd say the sky's the limit. The sky really is the limit because your ass can't fly in this game. What would be cool is if it had like New Game Plus where you can fly everywhere. One thing I like about Reignited is the mods. I think if I ever played it, I would play it like really modded version of it. Speaking of mods, I can't wait for that Spyro mod to come out that gives you more levels in the first Spyro game. They're actually working on the first proper ROM hack. I'm so excited. I hope it's like the beginning of the Spyro series getting a lot of ROM hacks. Because, like, I would love that. I would love that infinitely. <laughs> Alright, so I still have to do Nasty's loot. Which, by the way, in the beta is called Nasty Booty. <laughs> If you ever wanted to know if Insomniac had a track record of having innuendos before naming the Ratchet and Clank games, the answer is yes. They have a long and storied history of this bullshit. I recognize any of the voice actor names. I don't think I've ever really looked at this list. I wouldn't recognize them anyway. I don't know any voice. Anyway, for those people who are wondering, yes, yeah, Spyro is voiced by SpongeBob. And now you're never gonna be able to one hear it. Happy birthday. You literally missed most of the stream. Get fucked. <laughs> Hi, Whack. R.I.P. Yeah, R.I.P. It is like 9 o'clock for you, to be fair. And I probably should have specified E.S.T. when I said I would be starting around 8. Was that the gym for over two hours? Nice. Working out is good for you. It releases the good feelings. Anyway, uh... Give me that 100%, thick boy. Nasty ancient history now. So, what's in there? Nasty booty. Let's go. I have I have made all of the updates that I wanted to make. I'll probably like summarize them in my Discord or whatever. But that's all the updates on streaming that I'm going to be doing. And I guess the only thing left to do is, uh... 
I will never get tired of this. It's such a cool little thing. Like, you start on a ledge that's way too short for your glide, and you just kind of try it anyway. And then you find out, oh my god, I can fly? Are you real? Your reward is a level where you can fly. What a cool reward at the end of the game. I don't- I know that I play this game a lot, but I kind of hope that every time I do it, I can succinctly get across. Succinctly, hell no, actually, I ramble like crazy. I can thoroughly get across how much it means to me. And I play it every year because it's a tradition, but also just because it's, uh, familiar to me. In a place where every single year I always feel like a different person. <laughs> I mean, I am, technically. But there's something like destabilizing about being aware of that and knowing that next year I'm not gonna be the same person I am right now either. This person is not gonna be here. Also, the little visual cue of that door having a flower garden and this being a flower garden to kind of tell you this is where you need to go next. Kind of neat. Anyway, I don't feel like chasing that guy around this place. So, thank you. Speaking of nasty booty, I did workout gym. <laughs> we changed with time. It's so different who we were. We met each other in 2010. You're not wrong. We sure what we sure are. The music in this level goes so hard. Like, I like the music in Spyro in general, but something about the music in this level has such amazing energy. I do not think I could whistle it, not with a lot of effort, not even with my best effort, because of just how much it's flying around. I've never done the spin moves in the air. Mostly because they don't really come into play, but they are fun to do in Nasty's loot. I'm already thinking about tomorrow. Plus, I have so much snacks for my birthday. I had sushi earlier that I ate on stream because, no. Uh, my stream, my rules, bitch. Uh, <laughs> I know it's probably nasty to some people, but whatever. Uh, I wanted to snack. Whee! Uh, I have shrimp. I've got leftover takeout. Uh, I've got canola chips and dip. I've got cookies. I... I I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Sorry.
This must have been such a fun thing to perform, not only to compose, but to actually perform. There's a reason why people in the fandom have such a respect for Copeland that we have a YouTube channel called Copeland now, where a bunch of people who were huge fans of his work got together uh, and made and like ripped the sound font and not only would recreate Spyro songs in the style of other Spyro games, but would also make original soundtracks that uh, sound like they belong in a Spyro level. It's not even just like, oh, here's the sound font he used. It's like replicating his style to a degree where it is unrecognizable from an official Spyro level. That's so fucking amazing to me and, tal and like genuinely like talented. I, I hope the guy knows how much he's appreciated in the fandom. Like, there are people who venerate his work to the point where they replicate it. I think he's probably one of the best things about the older games. Like, his work is one of the best things about them. I try to pretend the Spyro 3 soundtrack doesn't exist, though, personally speaking. In the Japanese version of this game, there's a, there's a sign in front of this that says, I will give my entire treasure hoard to the person who becomes my friend first. So basically, uh, that makes it a bit sad. Well, that's it. Once I go through this portal, that's it. We have completed another, another year. Make Spyro 2 remove the air spin? It did. They cook vegetables. Drink I had. The meal. Salt milk mixed with protein powder. Fair enough. I mean, it sounds healthy. I hope it was fulfilling. Spyro the Dragon. You've defeated Ganasty Ganork. In Reignited, you can use a cheat code to get these glasses. In the Switch version, there's an extra cheat code to get pride glasses. And I'm happy for the dragon but I'm upset that it's not I in the PC one. I spend the rest of my dragon days butting heads with Nasty Nork and his weird minions. What's a minion? Uh, never mind. You know what they say. For every good battle, you need a good adversary. And I felt that Nasty, in spite of his misguided nature, was a worthy opponent. Uh-oh. Here we go again. Yep, see, every see you next year. <laughs> Anyway, uh, good talk. Excited to start on Fantasy Live tomorrow. Um, I can talk a little bit more easily during that game, too, because that game's pretty grindy if you play it the way the developers intend. You actually don't have to, and I'll explain why when I when I sh uh, start playing it. There, are th But it's very flexible on how you progress. But I want to do as many things as possible. Um, and it's going to be really interesting, I think, because it, I wonder if I'll get any, like, people who are really good at that game in chat. All I know is I'm excited. I've been waiting on the patch that fixes this game's weird graphical glitches for a long time. Uh, and it's finally here. You can finally fully play Fantasy Life on PC, as far as I'm aware. Now, if the game at some point runs into a bug, uh, and I end up not being able to finish it due to bugs, that's going to be unfortunate. Thankfully, I have backups. I have, a, I have a backup game in mind. In case that happens. But we're going to go through my list as best we can, and I guess I'll see where I, how I feel about this whole thing when I'm at the end of it. I definitely am not just going to stream in Perpetuum. It was never supposed to be a forever thing anyway. It's mostly just a thing I did to get my shit together, learn how to talk to people, and try to keep a sleep schedule. All of those things have failed. So I don't think it's a good way forward with any of them. But it is something that I like doing, because I like talking about games. 
and I like doing so without the pretense that video essays need. And I don't necessarily think it's a problem that I don't do all this extra bullshit effort, like, have, like, aesthetic-looking extreme cam setups or be a fucking VTuber. But at the same time, I don't know if there's much of an audience for the old school point a camera at stuff you like and just be a disembodied voice thing now. I'm not sure my voice is unique enough to really warrant an audience in the first place. Did not that I'm probably I gave up on maintaining a sleep schedule. <laughs> I I want to have one because it's good for your mental health in general. Ha. Ah, wrecked. And we finished before 1 o'clock. I, I didn't want to be up past 2. Uh, 1 o'clock was like the point where I'm like, alright, gotta start speeding it up. But, hey. It's uh, about 12.30 for me. I have to... I have to be up in the morning. That's kind of why I, I started to rush a bit. I mean, I guess not really. I didn't really rush this one too much. I actually kept track of my time on it pretty well. And I guess that's because I kind of have an idea about how to get through this game now. In a way that's relatively uh, conscious of my time. I might be familiar with Fantasy Life and other games on that list. But that doesn't mean I know them as well as Spyro, so I guess we'll find out how well I manage my time with something that I'm only semi-familiar with in comparison. But yeah, I, I don't know how interesting I am, really, but I guess I'm going to find out, because apparently anyone can find an audience if they just do this consistently. Which is true. And, I don't know. Uh... <coughs> so basically, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I like having a plan. I've also got other projects I'm working on that I can just talk everyone's ear off while playing an RPG that I can't really do in a game where I'm like hyper focused on getting through it in one sitting because I know how. Uh, but that'll be that'll be for tomorrow. I'm I'm excited about this. I'm excited about a lot of this. Uh, and I feel for many reasons I didn't want to go into on the stream because of what happened last year. <laughs> I'm a lot better than I was last year. <laughs> Last year was a disaster. I, I didn't like crying on stream. Especially not for, like, a third of it, if I'm honest. Uh, I, I don't, I don't, okay. Full, full like, d disclosure, I don't put on a mask. I refuse. I refuse to mask. Every emotion I feel, everything I express, every nice or mean thing I say is a thing that I mean. I don't do I don't say shit for clout. I don't say shit to make other people comfort uncomfortable. I don't say shit to conform. I don't manipulate people intentionally. Uh and I still felt like the thing that happened is manipulative. <laughs> Like, inherently. There's no way it can't be. People who care about me, or who are even interested in my content, don't necessarily like hearing someone have a mental breakdown, so... Yeah, that one's hidden. I'm not going to hide why it was hidden, that is literally why. I just think there's a difference in you knowing it happened, and actually seeing it. Because it's hard for me to watch now. It's gotta be really cringe for other people to see it. Or just generally painful for people who either care about me or who actually like my content because parasocial relationship or not ship or not uh, if you enjoy what someone makes you you do feel a little bit like you want that person to just be okay and at least I can say now that I am a lot happened to me last year uh, some of it was fucking horrid and some of it was pretty pretty liberating honestly so that's good. Um, and since I feel like I'm mentally in a better place now, I can pick up being more public. Not just streaming, but like with everything. Yeah, maybe not Twitter. I've debated on deleting my Twitter for a while. I don't think I'm going to show up on Blue Sky unless I absolutely have to. Or unless I want to for shilling. Like, I'll be honest, I will only do it for shilling if I do it at all. I don't like social media. I'm kind of done with it. Um... 
The Newgrounds isn't going anywhere because Newgrounds is the last bastion of a good R site that exists on the internet. And you can always find me on Discord until I get banned for some bullshit reason, because Discord is run by incompetent dumbasses now. And if you don't find me on Discord, you'll probably find me on Revolt, which is a Discord clone. Or, um... Steam, which law or um, let me not Steam. I shouldn't give out my Steam to randos. Uh, I'll find something. I love. New I never heard of Revolt before. See, I found out about it. It's like, it's a Discord clone, but it's de it's, and it's a centralized Discord clone. Like they have their own main server. But you can take their client and you can redirect it to a server you host. It's open source. Well, okay, it's not open source. The actual main server isn't open source. However, they they like they make it so that the technology can be used by anyone. The idea is to make something that even if the main server is shut down, other people can pick it up. They want something that can be salvageable. They don't want something that's just run by a company. Uh, I don't know how sustainable it is because of how expensive the internet's gotten. I know that you can't do certain things with it and you probably never will be able to, so you can't upload images to their server because uploading images would exponentially increase the costs. Um, I think that's fine, personally. Sharing images on the internet has become integral to it, and the reliance on sites like Imgur isn't exactly new. We've kind of always had stuff like that. Um, but like... It's a thing I can live without, being in a chat thing. I don't know if embeds will always- will ever work. I think embeds would be easier to get to work. Um, and the- the, the voice chat kind of sucks right now, but like... It's a little bit better than Discord, especially the part where you can run your own server. Their basic attitude is, we will never spy on you. Whatever you do on your server is your business. You're culpable for whatever bullshit happens over there. If something happens over there and it's downright illegal and it's on your server and you're using our client, we completely disavow that shit. <laughs> and they can legally do that because they're not running the space. So they're like, yeah, you want to take your weird shit, you fucking go over there. Uh, but like on the main server, they do have rules. But they are as they are as few as they can possibly get away with having. A lot of them are just things to not step on, like, local law's toes. Um, and also to just not be really genuinely really unethical. Like, I don't think, like... I, when I looked at it, I'm like, alright, these people are reasonable. They're They're like the old internet. They're not, like, stupidly free speech about everything the way that, like, neo-Nazis on Twitter are, but they're like what the old internet was like, which is basically a lot more tolerant and accepting of people with different ideas. And, honestly, yeah, no, I, I, I appreciate the way that they framed it. N64 RC car racing game, alright, fair enough. I should probably stop yammering on, honestly. So this is what a 120% save looks like. Uh, for people who have never seen one, I don't know why you wouldn't have seen one by now. Like, this game is ancient. This last thing on the inventory screen in Nasty's World, by the way, because all of the others have it filled up, right? This thing drove me crazy for years. I'm like, is there a secret level somewhere that would fill in that last space? I would drown myself in the ocean repeatedly in Nasty's world, trying to find the one secret that would unlock whatever that empty space was. I was obsessed with that empty space as a kid. Uh, turns out that this game just had a, quite a few pieces of cut content. Anyway... Uh, I'm going to stream again tomorrow. I don't know who's going to be interested in watching it. It's going to be a game I don't think many people care about. And it's probably really not a game that's fun to watch. But the good news is it's a game that you can kind of tune in and out on. Because the story is frankly not that engaging. 
I think it's cute and wholesome, and I like it a lot, and I'm going to gush about it. But you're not going to miss much if you don't. Uh, if you don't come in on it. <sighs> but I'm, I'm excited. Uh, my streamer friends tell me streaming RPGs is one hell of a thing. But you know... It is what it is. All right. I rolled off that thing trying to put my controller down. Lol. I've killed all the enemies around here and I'm still looking for enemies to kill. So that's that. It's another year. Uh We'll do this again on, uh, next year in 2025. I can't believe my internet held out for this long. Uh, good night. I'm going to go die. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab some cannoli and watch YouTube, I guess. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. I appreciate the people who tuned in. It's always really nice to have people to share this game with, even if people are really sick of seeing it. I, I hope I always have something interesting to say about it, at least. Alright, that's it. Goodbye.